Tampa Bay and Minnesota in Bloomington, Minnesota. Tom Matty has told us that Fran Tarkenton will be back at quarterback for the Vikes. Well, you know, Minnesota showed last week that they could play against a tough 3-4, and Denver has one of the best. So consequently, you've got to say that Minnesota will take care of Tampa's 3-4, plus the poor secondary that uh, Tampa has, and Tarkenton will do a good job fooling them. Uh, this is, everybody says this game's easy. Oh, it could be easy. I think it could be. Okay. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Radio Shack, a Tandy Company, the nationwide supermarket of sound. And by Ford and your Ford dealer who are introducing the all-new LTD and Mustang October 6th. From Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota, CBS Sports presents the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Minnesota Vikings. Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Thacker with Tom Matty, and today's matchup here of the Central Division teams is the experience of Minnesota against the youth of Tampa Bay. And, Tom, there are two particular vitamins who have the Vikings with the most incredible record for endurance this game's ever seen. There's no question about it, Jim. Jim Marshall is starting his 253rd consecutive game. And you take a look at Mick Tinglehoff. He's starting his 227th. These are two ball players who are starting games, just not playing in them. They are starting in them. And this is some kind of record. They're both on the same team. The longest streak that's ever been played consecutively by any two players in the history of the NFL. A toss of the coin has been won by Tampa Bay. They've elected to receive. Kicking off now for the Minnesota Vikings. Number five back for the Vikings to kick off will be Mike Wood, a rookie from Southeast Missouri State. So here's Bud Grant Vikings, the dominant team in the Central Division, kicking off and receiving Tampa Bay. Back is George Ragsdale at the two. Speedy player over the 20, 25, 30 goes Ragsdale, and he is filled at the 33. Excellent run back by Ragsdale, but Tampa Bay in business. There's the backfield for the Buccaneers, and Doug Williams, the sensational rookie from Grambling, will start. Ricky Bell with Johnny Davis. The receivers, and Larry Mucker will start in place of John McKay up front for the Buccaneers, the offensive line. Schumacher, Kurt Schumacher, replaces Winans at uh, left guard. That's the only change in the front. First and 10 for Tampa Bay at the 32-yard line. And Williams at quarterback. They go to Bell, the tailback, and not much. Oh, he is pounded by hard by Fred McNeil, the right linebacker. And how about that Viking defense? Perhaps the best known front four in all of football, although it has Mark Mullaney in there in place of Carl Eller at the moment. Jim Marshall with his 253rd consecutive start, an incredible record. And maybe the best core of linebackers from the National Football Conference, Jeff Seaman, a great one. And how about that uh, experience in the corners at Wright and Bryant? The defensive back. Second and about nine. Williams inside hand off to Bell. Gets a good opening over the 35, 37-yard line. Bell going back the other way. And you have to change direction against these guys. You sure do. One of the things, Jim, that ball clubs feel they can do against the Minnesota Vikings is run the ball. And I think that's Tampa's game plan today is to try to establish that running game. Bill Wise on the stop. The officials headed by referee Ben Dwight. There they are, assigned by the National Football League. Now, Young Williams facing his first third down play of the afternoon. He was hurt in the opening game for Tampa Bay, but he's back in the lineup today. They're going to run for it now. Sweeping left, up the first down. Over the 40, up to the 44. So Tampa Bay determined here to establish a running game. They punched out the first down to the 44-yard line. Mark Mullaney on the stop with Tom Hannon. That was a gutty call, Jim, to call a running play in a third down with long yardage like that. And I think the linebackers were looking for that pass. They dropped back. That gave them the opportunity to pick up the run and get that first down. Couple with the fact that Minnesota just has a ferocious defense against the pass. Mucker in a slot. Again, they had it in five this time to Johnny Davis, but there's nothing doing this time. The fullback trying to get a hold. Jimmy DuBose it is, who would come in and replace uh, Davis. DuBose, a third-year player at the University of Florida, had pulled a calf muscle and had been out. Now he's going to go back to the sidelines, and Davis will come back in. Jeff Seaman is the man who plugged the hole right at the 45. They give him that much motion for a gain of one, second and nine. 
Bucker goes wide to the right. Off to the left is Morris Owens. Williams has yet to go to the air, but now faces second and nine. Cross play, foul. Not much room. There's the Purple Gang. Fred McNeil, a sure-handed tackler for my linebacker, closed the gap. These, these, these linebackers, I think, are probably one of the best group in all of the NFL. And, if we, and here's where you'll be able to see the linebacker movement. You can see Seaman coming right in, and here comes McNeil closing the inside. Seaman breaking to the outside. Blair is right there on the tackle, and the Purple Gang is all over him. Now a change as McNeil goes out. Nate Allen comes in, a nickel defensive change as Bud Grant goes with five defensive backs. Now looking for the pass for Williams. He's yet to go to the air. Third and ten, though, from his 44. Williams, rifle arm. Right side. It's going to be way short. Something got mixed up there as he was trying to go down the right sideline. Jeff Seaman was putting a rush. Jim Obradovich was in at wide receiver, and it was thrown well short of him. Good pressure from the Vikings, so it'll be a kicking situation for Tampa Bay. You know, Jim, on that play right there, they both the linebackers got down inside in there. They had a 4-4 inside blitz coming to the inside, which is they're trying to put that pressure on that young quarterback. Ah, here's the fine young punter, Dave Green, who leads the National Football Conference in punting with a 44-yard average. Back is Allen. At the 15-yard line. And hit down to the 15. Kevin Miller it was. Kevin Miller, not much return. So the Minnesota Vikings prepare to take over for the first time back at a hole at their own 16-yard line and no score. 69 degrees in Bloomington, Minnesota. An excellent football afternoon. Minnesota takes the ball for the first time, and Fran Tarkenton will start at quarterback. There he is in his 18th season at a jam thumb from a week ago. Has it at his own 16-yard line. First down pass. Talking to the pump. Gets the short one of the corner of the 20, 25. Close to the first down. Out of the back was not former was Ricky Young. There's Tarkenton and Young, 34, a great addition from San Diego with Foreman. Two fine receivers coming out of the backfield. And this set of receivers giving Tarkenton perhaps the best pass-catching core he's had in his long career. Offensive line, Tinglehoff with his 227th consecutive start today. Second about a yard, so Tarkenton, the KG veteran, can play a little bit here if he wants to. It's an ideal situation for him. He can call it. he got to watch the run, but they can also throw the bomb on it. But Foreman's going around the corner. That's the first down. Pounded out of bounds in the neighborhood of the 29. But it'll be a first down for Minnesota. A defense for Tampa Bay, and it's a good one. They play the three-man line. There it is. A fine one. Leroy Selman, a great uh, player at right end. The linebacking core includes four. Remember the name Dave Lewis. And there's Leroy's brother, Dewey. Great player from Oklahoma. And the defensive backs. A change there because injuries have really riddled the secondary of Tampa Bay. They're down to five defensive backs. First and ten for Minnesota at the 29. Giving to a tailback, parking through, goes Young. Young to the 34, and what an addition he's going to be for the Vikings. Stopped by Selman, but he gives Foreman a lot of help. He sure does. They're both complement each other. They both can catch the ball, and they both have that quickness to be able to adjust on the block. That time, uh, Tampa was coming with an all-out blitz on him, and he broke up to the inside, saw that crack to the inside, and picked up good yardage because it looked like he was going to be thrown for a loss, Jim. Second down and five for Tarkenton. He puts Sammy White to the right, Ahmad Rashad to the left, fakes the draw play. Tarkenton going deep down the middle, and he's got his tight end. Bob Tucker coming across near the midfield stripe as Tarkenton strikes through the air to Tucker. He picked him up from the Giants. Watch the pattern of Bud Tucker. Watch Tucker right here, Jim. He's coming to the inside with an inside release. This goes, drives the man straight back to set him up. Then he breaks to the outside, and if there's any question about whether Fran Tarkington's thumb is bothering him or not, I think that has been <laughs> eliminated. I think he's three for three right now. Good point, uh, Mark Cotney, the strong safety made the stop, but a beautiful cut by Tucker right in front of Cotney. First and 10 at the 47-yard line. Foreman, no opening. Ooh, is he smeared. A great hit, and maybe a fumble it is, recovered by Tampa Bay. Richard Wood, the inside right linebacker, really put a shoulder that time on Foreman. 
And he's hit him at the line of scrimmage. Leroy Selman covered the loose ball. And for a change, here's a break going the other way for Tampa Bay. They've been plagued by mistakes for two weeks. But now the Buccaneers get the ball in a turnover and in Minnesota Viking territory. In the Central Division, Chicago is leading Detroit 7 to nothing at halftime, and Walter Payton must be having another good day. Well, a great start by the Bears in this division, Tom. Neil Armstrong from this club, Minnesota, is up there and off to a great start. But here's the first big break in this game. Tampa Bay with a turnover. And Williams trying to go to the air. Down the left, they've got a man open. And out of bounds with 29-yard line goes Morris Oren. Coming across in a crossing pattern at the 29 of Viking. And Tampa Bay now with an early threat as that ball was laid in there beautifully. I tell you one thing, this young quarterback, in my estimation, is one of the real great finds. Here he is setting up right here, play action with the draw. The man out in the flat draws the linebackers up, as you can see, and the receiver, Morris Owens, goes right behind those linebackers and picks the ball up for a great 17-yard reception. Deepest penetration by either team. From the 29, hand off the backfield to Jimmy DuBose, but he is smeared at the line of play by Mark Mullaney. Mullaney, who has taken over the old left-in spot by Carl Eller, and then when Eller comes on, Mullaney will shift over the right side. My boys in Cleveland and Atlanta tied in the second period, 10-10. to -10. Cleveland on the road for the first time, Tom, so they'll see if they can keep things going. In Atlanta, the Falcons look like they may be generating a little offense for a change this week. And they've got that great defense behind them, too, Jim. Second 11. Passing situation, perhaps, here for young Doug Williams. Three-man pattern down. Williams going deep in the end zone. And it's Owens, but too far thrown. Overthrown to Morris Owens at the end zone. So that'll be third down 11. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Minnesota Vikings and the National Football League is prohibited. Kansas City, New York Giants. The Giants starting off with a great season this year, leading Kansas City 14 to 7 in the second period. Marv Levy, one of the 10 new coaches in the NFL at Kansas City. Isaac Higgins is now in, both he and Owens by the left passing situation on third down 11. William bullet pass man, almost intercepted, and I think we'll get in a turn. There was the new rule, and a chuck, I think, around the 20-yard line by Bobby Bride on the intended receiver, Larry Muckler. We'll see if... Uh, a penalty might go against Tampa Bay. And we've got Mucker running into Bryant. It works both ways. It sure does. That's that new rule right there in that five-yard area. If you establish your position, you will be able to take care of him. He can't run you over now. Well, now the option here goes to uh, Minnesota. The ball at the 30-yard line. It would be a 47-yard field goal attempt approximately from here. The Vikings can call for a uh, penalty which would give Tampa Bay another play for the two ways to look at it, and it looks like Ben Dry's going to march it off. So let's listen to uh, Ben on the play. Offensive pass interference, number 85. Third down. So it was Morris Owens and to Bobby Bryant, offensive interference. Well, Mr. Anderson, Cincinnati misses him right there. Pittsburgh out to 21-3 lead, second half. Great, Second quarter, rather. Great start for the Steelers this year, that division. Now it's third down and 21 yards to go for Tampa Bay. Williams on the rollout. Williams fires the left side. It is caught down here by Owens around the 25-yard line, and he may have gotten it back in field goal range. I think he sure did. It was a great catch, and he kept both those feet, in, feet inbounds, and the official was right there to watch it. It was a great throw. Here you'll be able to see Doug Williams rolling back out to the outside. He charges to the inside. He's out there all by himself. This is where he has an option of runner throwing. He just lays it to the sideline. Perfect coverage. The official's right there. Both feet come down in. It's a 15-yard reception. Puts him in field goal territory. And Neil O'Donoghue from Ireland will be in to try. A 42-yard attempt looks long enough. And it is good. Oh, Tampa Bay has broken on top of Minnesota in this Central Division battle here in the first period in Bloomington. It's 3-0 Buccaneers. 
A little bit of a surprise in Bloomington. Tampa Bay, the underdog, is broken on top, cashing in on the break, and O'Donoghue boots it off. The Vikings will take it again. Kevin Miller at the nine. 25, 30, 35, Kevin Miller, and he'll be stopped right there by a horde of white-clad bucks. But a nifty run back by this fourth-year player, Kevin Miller, and Minnesota will put in play right there. Here you can see the coverage coming down, the wedge forming up. Kevin Miller picking his hole, break back to the inside. A great cut right there. And then the gang tackling by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's when you get hurt right there. <laughs> There's the scoring drive, 24 yards on four plays, mixed in with the 50 penalty for pass and offensive interference. But then the clutch pass by Williams brought them back. Now Tarkenton with his team behind goes to work at the 37. On the fake, a quick one to the left flat. Grabbed by Sammy White, the speedster. At look the 50, out. look out, 40, 35 in the Tampa Bay territory goes Sammy White from Grambling. And he wants to get the back to his old teammate, Doug Williams. Again, you can see Franny just setting up. Fakes the foreman, just turns around, wings that ball out to the sideline. Now watch Sammy White pick up his blocking. Cuts back to the inside. Just the pursuit catches him here. He cut, tries to cut back again, but they make the tackle. It's a 24-yard game. You know, Tommy, uh, Doug Williams threw 93 touchdown passes at Grambling. The first one ever was to Sammy White. Okay, first down. Targeting, being chased back here by Selman. Leroy's after him, and he takes him out of bounds at the 39, and Targeton knew the direction to go there with number 63 bearing down, and what a pass-rushing bear he is. We have a score at halftime right here. Seattle has come back to tie the New York Jets 14 to 14. The Jets have really started off with a good season so far to date, and this is sort of a surprise to me, Jim. Well, a great start by the Jets, but uh, Seattle has a very exciting team. Get Jim Zorn going, and they can put a lot of points up. Their problems have been defensively. Bill Kohler has come in, and Tampa Bay is going to go to a four-man line. Trying to put a little more pressure here on Sir Francis. <laughs> Second down, about 14. Gives on the draw play to form, and a good call by Tarkenton. They're looking for the pass. He's inside the 35-yard line, so Foreman gets back the yardage loss, and a couple maybe. But it'll bring up third down for the Minnesota Vikings, trailing 3-0. First period right here, Houston has jumped out to a lead over San Francisco. San Francisco's having their problems. They got rid of Plunkett and going with a young quarterback, Steve DeBerg. Yeah, I think they're a young and coming ball club, though. They've had a lot of change. They've got 18 new faces, rookies on that roster out there in San Francisco. That should be some game, though. O.J. against Earl Campbell in the matchup of Heisman trophies. Big play for Tarkenton. Third down and nine. Tarkenton up the middle. He's got White inside the 24. First down. Sammy White loose again. And today, White has come out catching them. Mark Cotney, the strong safety, but two big catches by Sammy. It's absolutely perfect protection. Franny setting up in the pocket. You can see that there's pressure on him from the inside and the outside. Franny just throws that ball right in there. Sammy White makes a great reception, picks up 15 yards. Well, he can score from anywhere. That time he gets 15, and he puts Viking in uh, scoring territory. Richard Wood has come back in, so Tampa Bay will go back to its 3-4 defense. Very tough on the run. Targeton being chased again. Targeton there behind him, and Taz trips him up, but Targeton gets back to the line of scrimmage. That was a close one over there. Now, Franny had been tripped up. The man comes in a little bit late on there. Here it is again, Fran setting up to the middle. Sees his good receiver is covered, tucks the ball away, breaks to the outside. This is what he's been noted for, his scrambling ability. And right there, he gets his ankle tripped up, and you can see the big man coming in. And that's, you know, that's a little questionable, I think. Back at the 18-yard line, though, the Vikings will face second down and nine. Very definitely in field goal range here, but Targeton is taking touchdown to put uh, Minnesota on top for the first time today. Well, they got a pretty consistent field goal kicker that Dan Meyer had a great game last week. Five, five inside handoff, Foreman. A couple of grudging yards given to him by Tampa Bay's inside defense. Then Leroy Selman, number 63, wrapped him up. Allen Trophy winner from Oklahoma, and what a young player he is. 
Watch his head right here snap back when he gets hit. And so, <laughs> the yard marker was away, but he really, he really got nailed on that play. Again, here's another angle of it. You can see as he's coming in that hole, watch that hit right there. Number, <laughs> number 63, Big Leroy really nailed him. 255 pounds, six foot three. You know why? John McKay drafted him one. Okay, Parkinson. Up the middle of Foreman inside the 10. Might be a first down, it's going to be close. Foreman was collared by Dewey Selman immediately as he caught the ball at the nine yard line. And I think they missed it by a half yard. It'll bring up fourth down. The fans want him to go. Oh, they want to go for it right now. You might as well make the move. It's early in the ball game. This is where you take the chances. You can afford to take the chances. Even if they do miss it. You know, they've got them backed up in the hole back there, and they've got to depend on that defense of the Vikings to hold them. But I'd go for it. Why they have a little gut, Jim? Vikings have asked for them. They're not getting a lot of signals from Bud, though, are they? <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't think that expression changes very often. It, you know, Tarkin, it changed last Monday night. Yeah, it sure did. He was a little excited about that one. But, you know, Tarkinen is having a great day already. He's 5 for 5 for 73 yards. And if anybody has any questions about any injuries that he has or has had in the past, you can forget about it. They're going to go for it. You can hear the crowd's response as coming in, Stu Voigt, a second tight end. Steve Craig is also in there. Sammy White goes out. Ahmad Rashad goes out. So the wide receivers are out. Three tight ends. Tucker, Boyd, and Craig all are in for extra blocking for the Vikings. So here's a big test for this Buccaneer defense. Fourth and less than a yard of the nine. They give it to Foreman, and did he make it? I think he did. Down to about the eight and stacked up. They may have to measure again. They're going to have to bring those sticks out, but I, they the Vikings seem to be very confident that Rashad is coming back out. So is Sammy White. They ran away from Leroy Selman. I would too, Jim. <laughs> but, but then you got to run right directly at Dewey Selman. Some choice. Dewey Selman at the bottom of the stack made the stop. Now it's a question of uh, where they've spotted the ball at the eight. Just outside the eight, between the eight and nine. That's where they had to go to get the first down. Here's the measure. First down. Oh, boy. Got some happy people around here. Oh, yes, a game <laughs> of inches. The Vikings, of course, beaten the first week, came back to win the controversial ending game on Monday night against Denver here when Denver scored a field goal in the final three seconds on a much disputed decision by the officials. First and goal. Well, there's no mood to lose another one. Now trailing 3 nothing, but first and goal now at the Tampa Bay 8. White in motion. Hits the foreman on the six. Cutting back at the five. Taken down on the four. Initial hit was made by Curtis Jordan, the free safety, and then Leroy Selman. Jim, that hole opened up real quick, but then it closed real quick also. He saw it to the inside. He had a quick pitch out there. He even anticipated the count a little bit on that one. Pretty good it, block by Ricky Young. It closes fast up there. These guys are real agile in Tampa. They really can come across and flow and move, and these linebackers that they have are something else. They have Dave Lewis, Dewey Selman, Richard Wood, and Cecil Johnson. And with the three uh, front men of Charlie Hanna, Dave Pear, and Leroy Selman, it's a very difficult defense to run against. Matter of fact, they rank third in the National Football Conference on defense. Second down goal. Parkinson just lob it to the left for Richard. Touchdown. Great adjustment on the ball. Just fantastic. Tarkington lays it up over there. This is the old pro at work, Sir Francis again. Just lays that ball out there. You can see the lob on it. You've got to be able to do it. And he comes under. Just a fantastic throw. Our boys are doing a good job. Look at the adjustment that he does make right on it. Defensive back has no idea where the ball is because he's got his back to the quarterback. Well, they beat young Mike Washington on the play. Now, Rick Danmeyer for the point after. Perfect. And Minnesota, after falling behind the first quarter, has come back to take the lead. Now over Tampa Bay, 7 to 3, going 63 yards in 10 plays. Coming up on Sports Spectacular, how about this matchup, Tom Matty? Al Unser against Mario Andretti. Not bad, not bad at all. That's the Trenton 150, and then quite a horse race live, the Ruffian. Ruffian is, you know, for the three-year-olds, and it's coming up next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. On Sports Spectacular, now kicking off Minnesota, back deep, Ike Higgins and George Ragsdale. 
Ragsdale's waiting for it at the nine. Money for Ragsdale. Oh! Oh, oh is he at hard? Fred McNeil almost took the head off George Ragsdale and drew a penalty flag at about the 24-yard line. We got to watch that one again. We've got to see this. Here's a reception back there. He's running straight up. He's picking his hole, looking at the wedge, and McNeil comes out of nowhere and nails him. Now, I have no idea what the flag's about, but McNeil is down on the ground. He's getting up awful slow. It's a clipping penalty against Tampa Bay. I started to say I saw no face mask no. or any evidence uh, from McNeil of that, but the flag was thrown almost simultaneously with a hit, but it was a clipping penalty against Tampa Bay. So the Buccaneers will have to start from deep in a hole. Wally Hilgenberg now, the venerable veteran from Iowa, will come in. A pride of Wilson Junction. Clipping, <laughs> personal foul, McNeil, right number 51 on a run back. First down. Wally's an old friend of mine. He's been here around, around here for a long time also. We've got some old dogs on this team. I go back when I played, Jim. I was just looking at uh, the front four for Tampa for Minnesota has something like eight more years experience than the entire starting lineup <laughs> for Tampa Bay. Picked up the backfield. Bell started to go in motion. They give it a bell. Over the 10. Oh, what a strong back he is up to the 15-yard line. He did most of that himself. Pickup will be about four yards on the play, so it's second down and six. Phil Wise, a strong safety on the stop. Here's play that Minnesota score, scoring drive right there. Number of plays is 10. Total yards are 63, and the last time is 6.04. But possession time for this first quarter, the Vikes have eight minutes and 41 seconds. Tampa Bay only has four minutes and 33 seconds. Well, the fumble being the difference there that helped Tampa Bay get its field goal. Second down and five, inside handoff, coming hard goes Ricky Young, gets the first down of the 20, up maybe the 23-yard line, stopped in the secondary by Phil Wise again. The strong safety, and there's Wally Hilgenberg. I'll tell you, they've got two good running backs in there with this. Ricky Bell is just unbelievable. Doug Williams, a young quarterback, calling a very, you know, conservative game right now. I think he wants to get back out of the hole here and get something, some move, some area to move in. New York Giants are Brad really McNeil putting it on Kansas back. City right now, 20 to 7 at halftime. Excuse me, Tom, but yeah. uh, McNeil is now back in the lineup at right linebacker for Minnesota. First half for Tampa Bay. The pitch to Ricky Bell on the sweep. Penalty marker goes down as Bell is checked around the 26 by Alan Page. First call we've heard there from the 12 year veteran from Notre Dame today. Washington, St. Louis, Mr. Pardee's boys. Redskins having a great start, aren't they? they and sure are. Bud Wilkinson having a little <laughs> tough uh, luck at the same time. Coming out of those, you know, after being away from football for so long, you know, it, it, it's a, quite an adjustment for, uh, for Bud to come in and start coaching again, I think. Now the penalty will go against Tampa Bay, and the Buccaneers continue to be plagued by mistakes, which cost them dearly in the first two games. Offensive holding, number 88. First down. Jimmy Giles, the tight end holding. Giles came in the package deal from Houston on the trade for the first draft choice, giving the Oilers the rights to get Earl Campbell and bringing Doug Williams here, number 12, to Tampa Bay. First down, 20. Williams takes the pass from the halfback draw, gives it to Bell, trying to twist free. And there's another flag, Jim. Matt Blair on the stop this time. Boy, those Minnesota linebackers are in on every play, seems like McNeil, Seaman, or Blair. What a compliment to that veteran front four. Now there's the uh, penalty announced Illegal against motion. Tampa Bay again. Offense number 86, decline the penalty, it's second down. You know, Jim, it looks like uh, Doug Williams is having a, a problem with the handoffs and the timing in there. You know, he's just coming off an injury and coming back to start this game, uh, the timing just doesn't seem to be right in that backfield right now. He almost missed that handoff on that one. Now he's facing second down and long yardage. Bell again behind Orange. Texas, the line of scrimmage by Jeff Seaman. 
that's Seaman, just, one of the outstanding middle linebackers in the game. That's just beautiful play by Seaman. He fills the hole. He sees the guard pulling out. And he just filled that hole and made the tackle. So when we're going to end this quarter, and the Vikings are up 7-3. John McKay. Looks like he might be on his way to the first tee here for a little last ball game. <laughs> Third down for his Buccaneers, though. Well, extra receiver Isaac Higgins replaced Ricky Bell. Williams going down to Larry Mucker, the 40, and he's got it out of bounds. But he caught it there out of the boundary, and it will be incomplete. Larry Mucker was across the sidelines. That's the type of mistake can hurt a young team. That's right. Here's Here's Williams setting up again. This guy can, has a great arm. He rolls to the outside, feels that pressure, sets up, and just lays that ball out perfect. Now, this is a responsibility. It's just a little too far. You can see the official is right there, sees the call, can't be any mistake on it. It's a good call. Very close, just by inches. Mucker came down on the boundary. So now it'll be a kicking situation for Tampa Bay. Dave Green. A leading kick on the conference, a pretty good rush by Minnesota, but a fine punt. And back for the return is Miller, and he'll get nowhere, stopped around the 43-yard line. Well, Minnesota will be back in its own territory as it takes over now, leading in the ball game by a score of 7-3 to three from Bloomington. Tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes begins a new season. I'm looking forward to seeing the rating game, Tommy, talking about television ratings, high stakes. No question about it. And then off after that, stay tuned for the 30th annual Emmy Awards, and the host is Alan Alda. That's 60 Minutes tonight following the NFL, or if you're on the Pacific Coast, at 7. Stu Voigt replaces Dodd Tucker at tight end for Minnesota. First down for the Vikings. They're in the lead now, 7-3. Tarkenton having a good afternoon. Swings it out the right side to Yick, Ricky Young in the flat. He won't get much out of it, though. Good coverage by the Buccaneers around the 39. Matter of fact, loses about four yards on the play. Tarkington right now is 7-for-7. Seven seven. Got a minus yards on that, so it's about 7-for-7 uh, seven for, seven for about 75 yards. You know, in that first quarter, Tampa had a total offense of 58 yards, while the Vikes had 114, and they, you know, it was very close in the number of plays that were run. The plays that Tampa had were 14, the Vikes had 15, but the time of possession was so much longer for the Vikings. Ricky Young is out. Brent McClanahan in the backfield for Minnesota. Down the left side on the deep pattern intended for Rashad, and that one was off the mark, and it might have been Francis throwing that one away. I think that he just slipped setting up back there. You can see behind him, he's got a little uh, a little soft spot back there, and it, it looked to me like he threw off his back foot. Third down and 14 to go. Let's watch it again. I just think that here's Franny setting up right here, and as you can see, he just doesn't have any zing. He sees that man right in his face, and he just doesn't have enough zip on that ball to get it to the sideline, because that's a far throw, Jim. When you're throwing it to the sideline, you're throwing it across the whole field. Tom, I think he caught that license plate coming in. That was number 63, <laughs> Leroy Selman. He, he didn't want to get hit by him, I'll tell you. Third and 14, so Targeted looking for 14 or 15 yards. Got all day. Uh, deep one down the middle. The shot is there for first down, I think. It's going to be close at the 47-yard line of Tampa Bay. This will be awfully close to a first down, but a man Again, of the you can shot. see with the Jim, excuse me. You can see with this three-man rush, they do not, you know, everybody's double teaming up on everybody. So Francis has a lot of time to throw that ball and look for receivers. You can see how much time. And he just sings it right down the middle. Rashad is right there. You know, this is a receiver that knows how much he has to get for that first down. And There's I'll tell you what, <laughs> just he, inches. He, he got it by two inches. <laughs> How's that for having a feel for the game, huh? Curtis Jordan made the stop. He's playing in place of Cedric Brown, the regular free safety who's out with some bruised ribs and a depleted Tampa Bay secondary. But now it's back in the Buccaneers' territory on the 47. Quite a clutch play again by Fran Tarkenton. He has thrown for over 25 miles of completion in a brilliant career. Big hand off of the play action, gets to Foreman, and Foreman is battled down hard by Cotney, the strong safety. Be a short gain, 
down around the 40-yard line, maybe the 42. The action right down on the line right here. As you can see in the camera coverage, it's play action. It holds those linebackers. France just rolls to the outside, and he's hit pretty good. Number 33 comes right up, Mark Courtney, and really gives a good shot to him. That makes France's nine for nine. That ain't a bad day's work. No, it's uh, about as perfect as you can get, I believe. Second down to go, about uh, five yards for Minnesota. Targeting on the handoff. Just a cheek back going through, number 34, Ricky Young. Fumbles the ball in there, and let's see what's happened. Whistles all over the place, but I think the whistle had sounded before the ball got free. Well, that's be a break. Close to another Minnesota first down. The Vikings coughed up the ball once here in the first half. Tampa Bay went on to convert that into a field goal ultimately but minnesota has come back to take the lead now seven to three and marching again with a third down and one coming up here at the tampa bay 38. sure you already situations like this the teams come out with their big men blocking up front they've got the three tight ends back in there again jim to be able to give them that extra strength to be able to blow these big linemen off the line to get that needed yard they uh, fake it to Young, and Tarkins is going to run for it. He's got the first down, and he ducked for safety around the 32. A clever play by the always thinking Fran Tarkins. Faked it in the line, and then watch what he does. I'd say, hey, uh, this is just an old pro at work right here. He just fakes right in there, holds those linebackers. You, you can see the fullback coming out the flat out there. Tarkins, to keep that arm up. He knows he has a first, first down. And he protects himself by falling down. I think that Bud Grant sent in the play, uh, to be honest about it, because he had a substitute coming in and perhaps a message with Stu Boyce. Nine for ten, the official statistics on target. And he I missed he the sideline. Nine line. for nine, I blew it. <laughs> he missed a little sideline a moment ago, but so you were close. Short game here in the middle of the line by Ricky Young, stopped by Dewey Salomon, who leads the Tampa Bay team in tackles. He had 27 coming into this game. That's an impressive figure after only two ball games. Pick up of uh, less than two yards. Call it two, down almost to the 30, inside the 31. It'll be second down and eight yards to go. They used Foreman as a decoy on that one. They sent him in a quick inside trap. You know, you. Dewey Selman there's uh, working on his PhD in philosophy. <laughs> Ancient philosophy. I wonder what his philosophy is about the game of football. I guess. <laughs> Ask around the league. Targeton straight back this time. Targeton takes to go deep being chased. Targeton fires it away. And it's going to be intentional grounding. No question that time because Dave Pear and Dewey Selman both were breathing down Francis' neck, and you can't throw it away to avoid a loss. Here you can see the pressure being put on Tarkington right here. He sets up, doesn't have anybody, any place to go. Nobody around. Nobody around. He just throws that ball away. <laughs> So Every once in a while you get caught with your hand in the cookie jar, Jim. Oh, well, nothing <laughs> but Offense, illegal pass, it's a loss of a down. That's what hurts. third down. I'm being an old quarterback. They march against you, and then you give up the down, you too. give up the down also. So that's one of those things you, you don't like to get caught doing. Third down and 19 now, and Targeton came through earlier here today with the third and very long yardage and hit Rashad up the middle. Now he has Rashad off to the left side. Mike Washington, who's been burned once, is on him again. And to the right, Sammy White. This is where Tampa's got to put it. They got the safety blitz. blitz. Safety, safety blitz. blitz. Target and Reddit. Target and rolling out. Mike at the first down. He's the 30. And he's going to be taken down short of the first down around the 27, but it may be field goal range. That's right. It's right in there. They came in with the safety blitz on that one. You can see it right here, the pressure that Tarkey can feel. He's setting up, and he sees that safety coming. He turns out of that pocket right away, and he's really trying to turn it on, but he... <laughs> That's old. Now he's going to try to crunch it. <laughs> oh, Speed, where have you gone? <laughs> where have you gone? 26-yard line will bring up fourth down and three for the Vikings. Number seven, Rick Danmeyer. What a start he's had five for five four field goals including one in sudden death a week ago or one monday really to win the ball game this one will be from 44 yards he's had one from 46 partially blocked i believe 
That'll be his first miss of the year. Somebody got a hand on the ball, and Dan Meyer fails to produce for the first time in replacing Fred Cox as the kicker for the Minnesota Vikings. So Tampa Bay's defense comes through. They take over. The Vikes in the lead, 7-3. to three. Next Sunday on CBS, NFL action, New Orleans at Cincinnati, Los Angeles, Houston, Atlanta at Tampa Bay as the Buccaneers return home, Detroit at Seattle, Green Bay with Bart Starr having his team going, goes to San Diego. And don't forget that doubleheader, St. Louis versus Dallas, and I'll be doing the San Francisco versus New York Giants game. You'll see one of those two next Sunday on CBS. First and 10 for Seattle, and they're on 27. Williams, a quick out, and he hits his man, Morris Owens, at the 30 for a short gain, and Nate Wright really hits him <laughs> as only Nate can sting him. Another score in the second period. Redskins have added another touchdown. I think they found a quarterback now in Joe Thijs. I think they have, too. I think he's a rolling, you know, he's a scrambling quarterback, very similar to the way Tarkington <laughs> operates, and he can throw the football. You know, old man Kilmer, there's, he came in the league with Fran Tarkington and I, and we all were, you know, we were all quarterbacks starting out a long time ago. Second down and five. Both wide receivers the left side. They give it to the tailback Bell. Cracks through for the first down. Penalty flag thrown as Bell goes to the 40. But a penalty marker is down, and where they threw it usually means offensive holding. No question about it. Here they are right now. It's a beautiful hole. It's the old sucker play right up the middle, but they got a holding penalty and a late flag coming back in. Let's see if we can see that again. Right down on the line. Counter action play. Right there, you can see the hook of the arm coming back to the inside, knocking the linebacker down, opening the hole up. Well, well by the holding. official. That was number 70. Second down. He's the man, Darrell Carlton, number 70, holding Matt Blair. And so it cost Tampa Bay not only the yardage, but also what would have been a first down. Instead, it's second down and 15 back at the 21. So that's quite a swing. These are the mistakes that they're trying to eliminate. They just can't do it. Otherwise, they'd be right, right in the ball game. Oh, they're Beautiful going deep throw. to Mucker. It is Williams, and Mucker's there, but he can't reach it at the 30. Mucker double covered on the play by Nate Wright and by Tom Hannon. I'll Alan. tell you, Mr. Williams can throw that ball. He got hit, and he still threw that thing. Alan Page putting some pressure on <laughs> on top of that. Third down and 15, though, facing Tampa Bay. Buccaneers, a young team, after winning those two games to close out last year, had high hopes. But then came the disappointments, losing to the Giants, losing to Detroit last week, games that John McKay felt his team should win. Now you, have six, you have six fumbles, you're really in trouble. Oh, here we go with Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh really putting away Cincinnati, 28 to three, and taking a commanding lead in that division. Looks like the Iron Curtain days may be coming back. Third down play for Williams. Williams staying pressured. Williams fires down the middle, and it is broken up by Bryant, intended for Mucker, number 87, and Bobby Bryant, a KG veteran from South Carolina. Came across the batted away. Jeff Seaman with good pressure on the rush. Oh, here's, here's, here's an upset. Seattle, another expansion ball club, is really putting it to, to the Jets. They're up at front right now, 17-14 at the third period. That game's being played in New York, too, so <laughs> quite an impressive showing by Seattle. Hunting situation, Dave Green stands back at his five. Kevin Miller, a single safety, 10 men on the line for Minnesota. The Vikings may be going for the block. Nope. They're going to try to set up a return. Kevin Miller waits back around his 35-yard line, has it there, and out of bounds around the 42. So Miller's return, seven yards. Dave Nozziger made the stop for the special team for Tampa Bay, but it's Minnesota's ball now. The defense held. They'll take over at their 42, leading 7-3. Good news for our Bears fans and those following Neil Armstrong's career here from Minnesota. They lead now 10-0 over Detroit. Foreman on a handoff. Right side, couple to the 44. Still there by left linebacker Dave Lewis. Outstanding young player from Southern California. One of about 10 of John McKay's former players. I think he's job. bringing them all in from California. That climate must be very similar down there in Tampa. That's a great town. 
You know, you can look around. You can find some uh, great players from Southern California playing for a lot of other teams. I'm not talking about just O.J. Simpson, but uh, there are plenty of others. Francis on second down gets Rashad a little quick screen. They're trying to set up, and he stops short of the midfield stripe. Be a gain of about six yards on the play. Mike Washington comes over with Curtis Jordan to get Rashad over the sideline. They broke that play before, Jim. That was the one that uh, Rashad went down the sideline on the other side of the field for 21 yards. Houston, uh, this could be Houston getting things going under Earl Campbell, the leading uh, San Francisco 10 to three. Talking about Southern California, the two tackles here today for Minnesota, Ron Yerry and Steve Riley, both were first round draft choices for the Vikings and both played for McKay at Southern Cal. Robert Miller's in the backfield for the Vikings. Targeted, looking for Foreman, has him on the sidelines. Foreman is down in Tampa Bay territory, trying to get the first down. I think he does around the 47. Foreman went in motion and was over there for a quick target for Targeted, <laughs> who loves to go to those backs. He loves to hit those backs. He's, you know, he's got 11 out of 13 for now for about 100 yards, right? He's having a great day. He's really winging the ball. He has that sprint out to the outside. Foreman just went down the sideline, picked up enough just for the first down, and Tarkenton laid out too. That's 11 out of about uh, 13 that's been hit by Tarkenton. He's over 100 yards now, unofficially, for the afternoon. The Jets have just tied Seattle. We'll tell you more about that score in a minute. First down here for Minnesota. Tarkenton out of the back again. Swings it out the left side to Ricky Young. Ricky on the 45. No, it's not Young. That's Robert Miller. Miller goes down to the 41, but draws a flag on the play. So let's see if this one's going to be called back. Boy, Tarkenton just mixes things up. There's a clipping signal you see against the Vikings. We'll pick up the player in a minute. But Tarkenton's like a good pitcher. He reminds you of somebody <laughs> like uh, Catfish Hunter, doesn't That's he? That's right. He sure does. He, he just mixes it very well. He calls his plays. Somebody up the middle hits a little flare pass out to the outside. Hits Rashad down the middle. You can see right here, breaks to the outside, and I think it was Wes Hamilton that had the clip on it there, number 61. Okay, let's listen to the word here from Ben Dreit on the penalty against Minnesota. Offense number 61, clipping. I First got, down. Jim I, got the, I got the number right. <laughs> Jim Huff, a rookie center from Utah State, backs up uh, Mick Tinglehoff. Here it is again right here. You can yep. see him hitting him right in the back. Number 61, Wes Hamilton. He said 51, but it was Wes 60. Hamilton. 61, right. The right yard. Look out for the blitz. Target is about ready to check him out. Oh, something went wrong. Target is slipping in the backfield. I think somebody made a mistake. I on the sure play. do. I think there was a check off. He saw the safety coming on up to the inside, faking the inside blitz. Francis, he, he automatic to the line of scrimmage in the back, just didn't hear it. Well, now let's see. He's got 23, <laughs> 28, 30, 31, 32. Second down and 32 yards to go for Minnesota. Back at their own 32. Oh, you can just see Francis don't want to take any chances right there. It was just a mix up on, 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 the, uh, on the count. The Vikings, who have won nine of the last ten Central Division uh, titles in the National Football Conference. Second down play, need a lot of yardage out of the back. The foreman can't hold it, but it was thrown a little bit behind him, to be uh, fair about it, as he went over the 30. So it looked like it hit him back on the hip. <laughs> Anytime you touch that ball, Jim, you're supposed to hold on to it. That, you know. Oh, you quarterbacks sound a lot. You know oh. that? <laughs> Chicago's up now, now 12 to 12 to zip over Detroit. Detroit's having their problems this year. And they've got a good ball club also. That's a safety, Tom, because yep. they were ahead 10 0, right? right? And uh, the Jets have tied Seattle. 17 17. Pat Lee just kicked the field goal 37 yards. Of all the scores for you at halftime, here Francis Tarkington facing, facing third down and 32. Foreman again out of the backfield over 30, 35. Selman is there, down on the 36. Penalty flag thrown, or was it? Yes, another penalty flag thrown down. Well, let's see what happens here. 
Minnesota trying to get out of a hole, and they have got a clipping penalty again against the Vikings. Wow. They're going to run out of football field. This series started down <laughs> at the Tampa Bay 46. Now, if the penalty is marked off, personal it'll be foul around clipping the 36. number 35. They oh, decline the a penalty. It's fourth down. You hear Ben? They decline this one, bringing up fourth down to get the football. Tampa Bay sends back a double safety. Oakland has taken the lead over Barstow uh, and the Packers. Uh, Oakland's got to start coming out of that shell pretty soon. Mike Wood, a rookie from Southeast Missouri, and there's the double safety set up. George Ragsdale and Ike Higgins. Oh, very, very fast. This one could be run back. There's a fumble and then scooped up. Jim, Bucker those, it was returning, and that was a pretty dangerous play he tried. Those kind of those kind of punts right there, you can really take back all the way. And if he had the opportunity to keep control of that ball, he'd have went right down the sideline. Let's take a break. Tampa Bay takes over first and ten at its own 38. Doug Williams has hit three out of eight for 37 yards. Going to go right to here immediately. A little short one intended for Bell. And I think Page or Eller, it was Eller. Carl Eller got a mitt on the ball and deflected it away. Oh, well, there's the Moose from Minnesota back playing under his old college coach, Murray Warmath, here on the staff of the Vikings. And getting his differences settled out, John McKay. In his third season, of the NFL, what great years he had at Southern California. 16 years, four national champions, 40 All-Americans. They give it to the first man through, and cracking there is Jimmy DuBose. Jeff Seaman hit him. The gain will be a couple, maybe three yards to the 41, and Doug Williams will face another third down play. You know, Jim, Tampa Bay has got to get some offense generated out here. Whether it's Williams rolling out and running, scrambling and open that thing up, they've got to put some more pressure on this Viking defense. They're just not maintaining any drives. They haven't had any sustained. Uh, they have not had a, sus a sustained drive since the beginning of when they got that field goal on that turnover. Third down play. Williams. The pressure's on Williams down the middle and almost intercepted. It was intended for Morris Owens and covering step for step with Nate White. But quite a rush put on by Matt Blair, blitzing from his left linebacker post. And Williams really threw it under the gun that time. We can watch Owens on his pattern right here as he's coming out. <laughs> I hope you'll be able to see the official on this also. It's a post pattern to the inside, and the ball is thrown behind him. And you'll be able to see the official right here. Nate Wright is right on the ball. Look where the official ends up with it. He falls down. And the two of them run right, right by him. They almost wiped him out. All right, Dave Green doing another great job of punting. Drives his man back, hits inside the 10, and goes on in for the touchback. So that was a punt of uh, 62 yards <laughs> by Dave Green. And now you understand why nobody this year in this conference has punted the ball any better. But Minnesota takes over again. Still up 7 to 3. Next Sunday on the NFL, you'll see on CBS, New Orleans versus Cincinnati, Los Angeles at Houston, Atlanta at Tampa Bay. And Detroit at Seattle and Green Bay at San Diego. Don't forget also, Tom, it's a doubleheader day, so you'll see either St. Louis and Dallas or San Francisco at the New York Giants. I know you'll be there. Consult your local listings for the games and times in your area. Some cities will only see a single game due to the NFL blackout policy. A 58-yard punt by Dave Green. He's now averaging over 46 yards a kick today. That's the top figure in the conference. Good take by Tarkington. Up the middle. Oh, Selman almost had it up to 30. Should have intercepted. It was trying to hit up the middle to Sammy White. It was coming over from the right side, and Selman was there but couldn't hold it. I'll tell you, that would turn that ball game around real quick if he had picked that thing off. You know, sometimes when that ball pops up in your hands like that, you get so excited, you forget to catch it. You want to say, come back. Come like back, a, please. You had a string on it like a yo-yo. <laughs> it would help. Targeton, second down and 10. Played the entire game thus far. Had an injured thumb on Monday night. Did not play the overtime. Tommy Kramer did that. Now Targeton. 
targeted until McQuickman goes to his back, uh, Brett, uh, Robert Miller. And Miller is called in by Dave Lewis as he comes up to about the 23. Francis is, is still hitting those backs coming out of the backfield. That's, you know, that's his trademark. He's been doing that for, you know, how many years? 18 years in the NFL, and he's now 13 for 17 for about 107 yards. That's unofficial, but he loves to hit those backs coming out of the backfield. You know, that's one of the reasons why I got to stay around for about 12 years in the league, because Unitas like to hit me coming out of the backfield. Well, I think you have to say, uh, Tom, a lot of times what he's hitting is what left him by the defense. <laughs> You're know, right. There, he'll use the target, and he's looking deep. He wants to go deep, and uh, oh, it's intercepted. intercepted. Back comes White. White at the 10. White to the five-yard line. Juris White intercepting. The ball was hit away from Sammy White. A big, big break in this ball game for Tampa Bay. I'll tell you, he really gets nailed. Sammy White, Francis setting up here, rolling outside, looking for a receiver. He really lays the ball in perfect to Sammy, but just as soon as he catches it, watches the hit right here, and the ball just pops right into his hands. And down the sideline, Jarris White goes in. Beautiful. This is the kind of play you've got to have to get in a ball game. Well, what an opportunity for the Buccaneers. That was Mark Cotney who hit a bone-crushing tackle to jar loose the football. And Tampa Bay is first and goal. And the Minnesota defense now puts an acid test. Trying to protect the seventh-point lead. Doug Williams gives to Ricky Bell. Up the middle, one yard at the most. And yep, there's a Seaman flag. Filling uh, the gap. Penalty flag is thrown, as Tom told you. And now this Tampa Bay team can ill afford the mistakes that cost them here earlier today. They've been penalized all afternoon. This one will go against Minnesota, however. It's another break for, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, the Buccaneers recovered a fumble in the first quarter near in the midfield area and drove down for a field goal to take the lead. Now trailing 7-3, an interception has put them in business first and goal inside the five. And now listen to Ben Dryden. You don't have the number, huh? Offside defense. First down. Well, Ben didn't catch the man either. <laughs> or maybe there was more than one. Somebody, somebody had to line up offsides on that one. Ball just inches from the two-yard line. First and goal to go for Mena for Tampa Bay. Johnny Davis is in there. They've got all their tight ends in there trying to block for him. They give it to Bell, sweeping left. Bell driving, Bell scores, touchdown, and Tampa Bay has a chance to tie the score. They've gone ahead. Tampa Bay nine, and Minnesota three. All right, you can watch Johnny Davis on this as he's a lead blocker on this. It's just a sweep to the outside. Bell picks his hole, hits that linebacker. He's coming out. Bell makes a great adjustment, breaks to the outside. Tom, you can watch, see it right here. Watch the block by Johnny Davis, 30 right, right there. Right there. That's the thing that sprung it. He hit Seaman right there, filled that hole so that he couldn't fill it. All you have to do on a play like that is just cut off that man and let the back adjust on it. Neil O'Donoghue. Well, a fumble, but he gets the kick away, and it hits the crossbar, bounding away. Could be a break for Minnesota. It will not count. It's just a two-point lead. So the Vikings come through. Matt Blair putting on the rush, but the snap from center was fumbled a bit. And so the point for the uh, try for the point after fails, and the score remains Tampa Bay 9 and the Minnesota 7. So that could be an important point. That, that, Remember, it was a block point after <laughs> touchdown here on Monday night that set the stage for Minnesota victory because had Denver made that point after, they could have won the game. Okay, remind you again, next week on CBS, New Orleans will be at Cincinnati, the Rams at Houston, Tampa Bay is back home to play Atlanta. And we have St. Louis at Dallas. And San Francisco versus the Giants, so we've got a, we've got a pretty good schedule for us. Detroit, Seattle, there are the doubleheader games. You'll see one of those two, Cardinals and Cowboys, or the 49ers and Giants, and consult your local listings for the games and times in your area. Some cities will only see a single game due to the NFL blackout policy. Napa Bay, back in the lead, kicks off. Back inside the end zone now. Coming out, Kevin Miller to the 15, to the 20, penalty marker thrown. Could be another clip here against the Vikings. 
the penalty now could put the Vikings back inside the 10 and in a deep hole in poor field position as they trail Tampa Bay, the decided underdog for this Central Division game. You know, you talk about special teams and watch Napsiger come down there. This is the guy that loves to come in and break that wedge up. Comes in there, really gets hit. Offense <laughs> clipping on a run back, number 83. He's, he's looking for anybody. Doesn't he'll hit anybody. Have the ball or not. Stu Voigt. He got caught on the, the clipping lineup. penalty. He was caught for clipping on the kickoff return. Vikings are set back to their eight-yard line. Took the Buccaneers only five plays and seven seconds to score. Not much. At the nine. Ricky Young has stopped after a gain of about a yard. Here's Second down and nine. Jim, here's where you don't want to make any mistakes. This is where the Vikings have just got to get back out and, you know, in some type of a field position where they can move that ball. Francis just, you know, you don't want to make any of the key crucial mistakes like a fumble or an interception or... Well, Tampa the, can really turn this game really around. And that's a pretty good defensive unit for Tampa Bay. <laughs> well respected around the league. Francis back to his own goal line and gives the short one out of the backfield. It's the tight end, Tucker, rather. And Tucker stops short of the 20, and it may or may not be a first down. Watch where they spot the ball. And it looks like he has gained the first down. Here again, Francis isn't taking any chances. You can see Voigt falls to the ground right there. Tucker falls to the ground, gets back up, tucks that ball away, and gets the first down. It's a, it's a very, you know, it's a low percentage mistake play that he ran right there, and it's well, just a good call. They go back a long ways, those two, back to the days of the Giants together. Targeted and be chased by Leroy Salomon, fires, and he's caught his man. He hits number 35 over there, Bob Miller. And we have another holding penalty, I think, right back in the backfield. Penalty flag is dropped back there, and Targeton in kind of self-reproach or disgust. I think Riley got Lovely. caught for holding. That'll erase a pretty good gain or potential gain for Minnesota. Uh, Vikings could be kept caged back here deep in a hole, and... Time running along, two minutes and four seconds. We're getting down to the close to the warning here in the first half. And Tampa Bay is in the lead by nine to seven. <laughs> well, whatever it is, Tampa's going to take it. I don't blame him. Keep him back in that hole. It's a pretty good walk off. Ten yards back to the nine. That's where this drive originally started at. First down. Steve Riley. Well, we figured, uh, Tom, that Riley would have a tough time with Leroy Selman, just as he did with Al Zato Monday night. Well, that's a tough time for <laughs> one calendar week, isn't it? <laughs> Al Zato and Selman. <laughs> one week after the other hit both those guys. You've got, a, you've got your hands filled, I'll tell you. First down for Minnesota, but back to their own nine. Draw a play, and the give is to Ricky Young. He isn't going much of anywhere. Taken back by Dewey Selman. And we're down to that two-minute warning, Jim. I'm sorry, Robert Miller. Dewey Selman on the stop. It was Robert Miller, the ball carrier. His motion got up to the 14-yard line. Second down. And there's the two-minute warning. One minute, 59 seconds to go in the first half. And Tampa Bay coming up with, I think, without any question, its most impressive showing of this young season. I think, you know, this is the thing that's going to keep this ball club in the ball games is their defense. You know, they're around the league. They're noted as one of the best ball clubs around to be able to stop the run. I think they're only letting up about 2.9 yards per rush right now. The thing that they've got to generate is more offense. They've got a young quarterback that they're going to go with, and I think that this kid has great potential in the NFL, Jim. He can really throw the ball. He's got the height and the range, and he can move around in that backfield if he's in trouble. Well, there's no question that John McKay has built a quality defensive unit already in three short seasons. And you have to remember, too, that Tampa Bay came in here very badly crippled for this game. Jeff Winans out at left guard. Mike Boriella 
the quarterback out both on injured reserve and lost for the season. They lost Cedric Brown, the free safety, had to move Curtis Jordan into that spot. And Don Reese, their uh, fine kick returner, is also out of this ball game. So this team <laughs> is very thin today, and they have pieced together an excellent effort up to now. With two minutes to go in the first half, they're leading Minnesota. The odds on favor to again win the Central Division. Second down. 15 to go for the Vikings. Flag might have been offside there by the left end or left linebacker. Inside handoff to Miller. Robert Miller stopped at the 19, but I think Minnesota will be given the option here of a penalty. Richard Wood on the stop. <laughs> It looked to me like it, uh, Dave Lewis might have jumped the gun. And that's the signal. Number 57, the left side. They get up, the ball's going to be at about the same spot, but they'll preserve the down, giving Sir Francis a little more time. Okay, Ben, you're on. Defense offside, number 60. <laughs> At second down, off timeout, Tampa Bay. Was Wally Chambers, who's now in the lineup, and this could be a key man in the future for Tampa Bay. Remember, he had the great seasons for the Bears. He had problems there with uh, that ball club, not to mention the injuries. He missed a good part of the preseason for Tampa Bay, but now he's rounding into shape. You know, you're looking at the passing yardage right there. Tampa Bay has 37, Minnesota 119. But also, we've had a lot of penalties that, you know, that flag's been dropping around a lot. But both teams, which is very interesting, is that the Vikes have five penalties for 46 yards, and so does Tampa have five penalties for 46 yards. Okay, targeted will have one minute and 54 seconds here, and he's a master, of course, at working the clock to get his team downfield. A field goal, remember, would put the Vikings back in the lead. That missed point after, that haunts a lot of teams as it did Denver here on the same field Monday night. Second down and 10. Rashad is to the left, Sammy White to the right. And they must have a <laughs> the old to give it up to Miller. Liberty. Miller on the reverse <laughs> play, and uh, Tampa Bay defense is not fooled at all. Another fine uh, defensive play by the Buccaneers, defense by Wally Chambers, so there he is immediately becoming a factor in his fifth year. We'll remind you again that tonight on CBS, a brand new series of the popular 60 Minutes. And tonight, you'll see the story of television's high stakes game, the rating game, and then stay tuned for the 30th annual Emmy Awards with host Alan Alden. That's following NFL football or at 7 p.m. Pacific time. I, I don't know, Tom, have you gotten any word or you have any idea about Foreman? He's on the sidelines, and he hasn't been in for the last couple of series. I don't know. Maybe he got he got hurt around there. He's moving around. It looks like he's uh, he looks like he's all right. But I, you know, we haven't got any report yet on as far as any type of injury. That last play there, Jim, was the old Statue of Liberty play, which I haven't seen used too often. But it was a, you know set up as a pass, and the back just turns around and comes around there. Another score here, uh, second period, the Orleans. And the Eagles tie. Eagles having a tough time getting off the launching pad. You know, we just did get a report on Foreman, and he is all right, so Bud must be just all in of those backs to keep him fresh. In motion goes Ricky Young, and oh. they hand off inside to Miller, and that play was stopped cold by Wally Chambers again. Boy, Chambers has been sensational in this series, and Tampa Bay uses another timeout to stop the clock. They want to get the football. Tampa Bay's being the aggressive team here on the final two minutes, and they are attacking even with their defense. You're not kidding. You know, you take a look at Chambers, and, you know, he came from Chicago, and he was the defensive player of the year in 1976, and he was plagued with injuries last year. And uh, he came down here, and he wants to really start a new life and be one of the real leaders down here. And he's got that great size and mobility 
and he can be one of the real future bright stars. But let me tell you, there's not too many slouches on that defensive team to begin with. Now, uh, Mr. C, Tom, you know, uh, Chambers ironically had the greatest game of his career against Minnesota three years ago in 75. 13 solo tackles and five sacks for 35 yards in that game. So he remembers the Vikings well. They remember him just as well. Larry Mucker back in double safety here with Ike Higgins. Tampa's used all their timeouts, so what they're counting on is good field position right here. Beautiful punt driving. Mucker back takes it at the 35-yard line. The footing's not too good down there, and he'll be stopped at the 39. Beautiful coverage by the Vikings. 25 was down there. That's uh, Nate Allen, a defensive back. Also down there was Fred McNeil. Offside. Bring it back. Down. Minnesota was offside. The Tampa Bay can ask for them to kick it again. And the clock shows 132. That's ample time. I think we'll see another punt. I do too. I'd push him back again because he really tagged that ball good and he's kicking into a wind here. Another score. They're in the fourth period now in New York. And Seattle, Seattle. is going up by wow. seven. That is a surprise, Jim. Tom, remember this. Here's another Viking man, Jack <laughs> Patera. That's right. He was a defensive okay, you're coordinator in. here. He's coaching Illegal Seattle. motion. Offense. 25 and a fourth down. So, Minnesota will kick it again. Mike Wood back to punt. Nate Allen was the man who was illegally in motion. Inside the five, Wood yeah, this one could be run back. A low one. Bucker has it down at the 40. He's at the 35, and what a difference that makes. Boy, about 25 yards difference. <laughs> for Tampa Bay, and they're very close to being in field goal range right now with over a minute to go. They got that sidewinder to kick that ball. Donnie, you can really kick that thing, so they're in great field position. But here is where they should have a ready offense. They should have had this on the sideline. They should have two plays ready to go, because that clock starts right away here. All right, I'm sure John McKay's had time to think about that, and he has Doug Williams, this brilliant young quarterback from Grambling out there, setting Mucker to the right side. Williams, he's going deep down the middle to Mucker over his head. He had him there, and Mucker couldn't quite reach him, and I tell you, Williams can really put some zing on the ball. You know, I was down there before the game on the field, and you know, I got a chance to stand stand up next to Doug Williams, and he is a big guy. He can, you know, he's got that range, and he's got a great arm, and he can throw it. Six foot four, 215 pounds. And we got Oakland coming right here, 14 to three over Green Bay, and that's halftime. Well, the victory they got over San Diego uh, could be all they need. <laughs> you know, Williams is only three for 11 right now, so you better start hitting somebody. Little movement in there. We're looking for a flag. Williams got good protection, and it is incomplete, almost intercepted. There was a penalty flag thrown. It looked like some motion in the line. Bobby Bryant was dropping over to cover with uh, Jeff Seaman. Intended for the tight end, Jimmy Giles, number I think, 88. I think it was 88. Uh, Alan Page was offside, jumped the gun a little bit. It's uh, interesting you mention that because... Uh, <laughs> That's Good. a false start on number 75 on the offense. Well, I guess that. Allen jumped on the reaction to number 75 right there. Dave Revis. 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 Penalties against <laughs> Dave Revis in his fourth year from Arkansas. He's an original Buccaneer. They got him on the expansion draft from the Steelers. The ball is back now to the Minnesota Vikings 41, and it's second down and 15. If they want to get in field goal range, Jim, they've got to come up with a pass reception right here so they can get down in there. Another score, Tom. There, Kansas City. <laughs> Seven, New York Giants. They're for real. 23-7 to seven in the third period. I'm going to do a game next week up there with the Giants. San Francisco at the Giants. So it should be an interesting ball game. O.J. comes in, doesn't he? He sure does. One minute and 13 seconds for Doug Williams. Doug Williams, who was taken here as the first round draft choice by John McKay from Grambling. Some critics said he had not faced the caliber of uh, competition in college, but Williams has shown all the tools already. Just needs experience. Williams, nice soft pass for Hagen. 
little bit wide for Ike Hagans, who was streaking across at the Minnesota 21. I, you know, Hagans looked like he let up on that thing. He should have run under it. He was coming across looking for that area where that ball's going to drop in there. Isn't hard to miss, Ike. He's only five foot nine. <laughs> and you know what they call it, don't you? Big Ike. Big Ike. Third down and 15. Tampa Bay at the Minnesota 41. Clock shows a minute eight to go. It's the big play right here because Williams either has to get a first down or get it closer because it's out of field goal range. Big play for the Minnesota defense. Williams down the left side as he did. Oh, right by Giles at the 20. Jimmy Giles, now he was in a crowd, pretty well covered, but he got his hands on the ball and looked like he might have been able to hold it. I, I think, think he should have held this one, Tom. I really do. Here's Williams setting up in here again. They have some tackle-tackle games on the inside, and the offensive line for Tampa really picks it up. The ball is thrown right out there, right over his hands, hits him right in the chest. Well, now you see it again, though. I believe that ball was tipped. I think it was tipped by Fred McNeil, and that's just enough to throw it off. Uh, it will. You know, you can... The four, when you ever get it near it, that was still a good throw. I thought the kid did a good job. Dave Green wants, uh, he was going to call timeout. Tampa Bay has no time out remaining. They're going to draw a penalty here in a moment or two. But Green has had a great afternoon punting. Over 46 yards a kick he's averaged. And he'll try to put this one away in Coffin Corner so there can be no return. And he does it oh, beautifully beautiful. inside the 10. Boy, just sparkling play by Dave Green in the punting game. A leading punter this year in the National Football Conference. Ray Guy, of course, uh, phenomenal in leading the league. But Green is the best in this conference. Minnesota has 55 seconds to go, a 33-yard kick that time, but he did the job. He did the job. He got the ball out of bounds inside the 10 at the 7. I tell you, any punter is as valuable as any offensive player in the field when he can get that ball down in there and he can have the long average like he has today. They're going to run out the clock, uh, Tom. Minnesota, that draws a smattering of booze here from the fans of Bloomington. But Minnesota not choosing to put the ball up here down in dangerous territory, trailing by two. They'll let the clock run out. One more play should do it if that's the strategy. Tampa Bay cannot stop the clock. At the six-yard line, this is second down. Again, Parkinson drops on the ball with 22 seconds to go, and that might be the final play of the first half. So, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have put on quite a show here in the first half at Bloomington. They have a two-point lead over Brian Tarkenton and the Minnesota Vikings as the final seconds tick off. The scoreboard reads 9-7 to seven in favor of Tampa Bay, and the Buccaneers with a pretty good showing. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. They're surprising a lot of people, and especially the fans up here in Minnesota. This ball club is here for real. Defensively, they've done the job against the Vikings. They have stopped that run. They're not getting the yardage that they have. Although Franny's having a good day throwing the ball, he's not getting any deep ones, the real deep ones, or the touchdown. And the best thing about it is that the offense has capitalized on the mistakes that Minnesota has made. That interception was the key to the whole first half as far as Tampa Bay goes up, sets up the touch in, and Rick, touchdown, and Ricky Bell goes in. All right. Tampa Bay broke on top first. They led three to nothing. Minnesota came back to take the lead seven to three, and some of the fans might have smiled at each other and say, well, here we go. The Buccaneers came again. And even though they missed the point, they regained the lead. And that's how it stands at the half in Bloomington, nine to seven, Tampa Bay. Story thus far today in Bloomington, Minnesota, Tampa Bay, the underdog, trying to knock off the kingpin of the Central Division here in the NFC. They're leading 9-7 to at halftime, the second tough game in a week for Minnesota. They won a very controversial ending game here on Monday night against Denver, a game that had what Minnesota Viking fans thought a very peculiar ruling at the end of regulation play. And on that subject, being an official in the National Football League may be one of the toughest jobs in America. Last weekend, for example, controversial calls at San Diego and Minnesota drew protests from players, writers, coaches, and fans. Some even felt they might be able to come out of the stands and do a better job. Well, during the preseason, sports writer Jack Clary got a Walter Mitty chance to put up or shut up. 
My name is Jack Clary. I've covered pro football for more than 20 years. But when Pete Rozelle dared a writer to come down from the press box and be an official, I took the challenge. Tonight, I'm going to be a zebra. <laughs> Find the rule book. I'm so nervous I need help getting dressed. Oops, wrong foot. But I'm not a complete novice. I've spent a year and a half learning the rules and getting in shape. Great game, great game. Oh, I love it. I'm so happy to be doing something as an active part of the game to get on the field to do something. I, I love the game. I really do. I, you have to do what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> now you have to be some kind of a nut. <laughs> Anything I can do? No, I just nothing's coming this way. I'll be yelling if I need you. Don't worry. All right, I'm with you. <laughs> if there is one position that worries me most, it's being the umpire. Find me your way. Just say move right or left. As the ump, here I am, right in the middle of everything. I don't know who's worried more. Me, my wife, or my insurance man. The speed and pace of this game is incredible. Is that holding? Hey, are those hands okay? I'm into the flow of this thing okay now. That's the third time I've been bumped. Oh, no sweat. Uh-oh, what's this? Hey, 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 oh, okay, let's go, break it, let's go back, let's go. Uh, I'm glad I didn't have to get mixed up in that. Hey, 71 hit that guy in the head. Where's that flag? Where's my flag? Use of the hand 71. 71? 71? We don't even have a 71. On defense. 71. We, on don't defense. Have defense. On defense. we don't have defense. defense. Even calling penalties is more complicated than I thought. Now I'm the side judge. Well, at least I shouldn't get run over. Hey, this is my call. I know he got the left foot down, and I saw that right foot drag in. I know I did. That had to be a touchdown. I watched those two feet come down. Two weeks later, I saw the films. And though I made a lot of correct calls, I missed the big one. Okay, Pete Roselle, you sold me. I can see where these men do so many things instinctively that uh, all these actions are done through years of experience. There's no way anybody can ever come out of the stands and say, I can referee, I can officiate a game. Forget it. And today in Bloomington, the officials having another busy day. No question about it, Jim. And an interesting score, Tampa Bay 9, Minnesota 7. We'll return to Metropolitan Stadium after this word from your local station. Welcome back to New York. I'm Brent Musburger. Some of you watching Tampa Bay and Minnesota. The rest of you are watching St. Louis and Washington. We've had a controversy down in the Astrodome in Houston, similar to the one last Monday night involving Minnesota against Denver. With time running out, referee Don Wedge, the same referee who was working that Monday night game, allowed San Francisco to set up and kick the field goal. There was a dispute by Bum Phillips, but the officials said, well, the defensive players were slow setting up. We'll show you that. But first, let's get you up to date on everything that's going on around the NFL right now. Chicago leading Detroit 19-0, and the Lions have been hapless on this Sunday afternoon. Cleveland and Atlanta, it's been one of the good ones, back and forth. But now in the fourth quarter, the Browns leading the Falcons by seven points. Kansas City and the New York Giants. The Giants may be on the way back. Lead 23-10. Two touchdown passes by Joe Pisarczyk in that game. More woe for the Cincinnati Bengals. Bill Johnson will be under fire after this one. 28-3. It's been all Steelers fourth quarter. Seattle and the New York Jets a surprise. The Seahawks lead at 24-17. The Jets under Walt Michaels don't quit. And they're starting to mount a rally now in the fourth quarter. Philadelphia and New Orleans, excellent first half. Tied at seven in the Superdome. San Francisco and Houston with time running out. The 49ers kick the field goal. 10-6, they are now into the third quarter. Many of you watching this game, and yes, again, the Buccaneers are playing the Vikes tough. 9-7, the Bucks lead by two, missed extra point in that game. And for those of you who are watching, you know how much the Washington Redskins of Jack Pardee have dominated so far. The Cardinals have settled for a field goal. Oakland and Green Bay, the unbeaten Packers, are indeed in trouble, trailing 14-3. That game is in the third quarter. 
special teams, as usual, have been a major factor. Let's take you now to Pontiac, Michigan, the Silverdome. Number 86 of Chicago is Bob Parson. He is back to punt. His unit will get down and cover, and there's a bobble by the Lions who have made one mistake after another. The Bears here recover and mount their first scoring drive. Avellini gives it to Peyton, who barges in. Thomas extra point makes it 7-0. Tommy Hart, formerly of the San Francisco 49ers, on a three-man rush. He is number 53, one of six sacks administered to Landry. Now there's a new wide receiver with the Bears, and oh, what a difference he's going to make. He is Golden Richards, turned loose by the Dallas Cowboys because of the emergence of Tony Hill, making a marvelous catch. That set up a field goal by Thomas, and it was 10-0, Chicago leading Detroit. Then again, it was Parsons back to punt. And watch the former Penn State tight end boom one, 52 yards, and Steve Schubert will get down inside the five-yard line, he'll down the ball on the two. And from there, it was safety time. It was Tommy Hart working a trick coming around the middleman, Landry vulnerable, and he's got him for two points. Now, what Golden Richard does, besides catch the ball, as you saw, it opens up the other side. James Scott can fly, as he does here. Avellini's got him. It's 19-0, Chicago. And Irv, how about checking in for us on that Washington-St. Louis game? All right, of course, the Washington Redskins went into St. Louis with a big play offense, but it was the Cardinals that pulled off one of the early tricks early in the game as quarterback Jim Hart throws outside to Dave Steep, but it's not a running play. It's another pass. Steep goes upfield to number 83, Twilly, and he goes out of bounds around the five-yard line, setting up an easy Bakken field goal, and the Cardinals take a 3-0 lead. But the Washington Redskins are determined to come up with a big play, and they do on the ensuing kickoff as rookie Tony Green takes the ball on his one-yard line. The Florida speedster goes coast to coast, and the Redskins take a 7-3 lead, and Brent, from that point on, it was all Washington. The Cardinals really have their backs against the wall. Joe Theismann, in the next series of offensive plays, goes to work with his great tight end, Gene Fugit, finds him in the end zone after a play-action fake here. Washington takes a 14-3 lead. Mike Thomas seems to be coming back in the true form once again to watch the quick feeders. He go inside, goes inside, picks out the halfback, touchdown. Washington leads 21 to 3 at halftime. All right, Irv, let's take everybody down to the Astrodome, show you the play in question. First, let's check in on Earl Campbell. He's already got a leg up on Offensive Rookie of the Year. The Heisman Trophy winner, number 34 from Texas, now working for the Houston Oilers. Battling the 49ers to the seven yard line. You'll watch him score for the fourth time already in this young NFL season. Outside speed, inside power. Here's the controversy. Time running out. No question about the snap or the kick being while there was time left on the clock. The question again for referee Don Wedge, this time by Bum Phillips, is why give them so much time to set up? Well, you know, that's the same thing that happened last Monday. At halftime of our doubleheader game, Dallas-Los Angeles, the commissioner of football, Pete Rozelle, will be along to explain that, plus the Oakland-San Diego controversy. So right now, let's send you back to Bloomington, Minnesota, and also to St. Louis. Gentlemen, take it away. And back in Bloomington, Minnesota, a sellout crowd of over 48,000, a little stunned at the way things stand. Tampa Bay leading the Vikings 9-7. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. Well, can this be the same Tampa Bay team that set a record of 26 consecutive losses? I don't know. I'll tell you one thing, and it's an exciting ball game. The thing about it is these guys are really out there, and they're trying. And that's what makes it a good game. If you can see a team that really wants to win. And they haven't tasted that victory that often, Jim. But I'll tell you, one day they've got it. All right. This could be the upset of the day. Tampa Bay leading Minnesota. But we know it won't be easy. <laughs> it's not going to be easy. The Vikes aren't going to give up easy. Start of the second half. Tampa Bay will kick off. And Minnesota will receive to get the ball immediately. And moving it deep now. Waiting at the end zone. Miller takes about a yard deep in the end zone. And here he comes. 15 as he hit it by 20. Number 77, Bill Kolar, a fourth-year player from Montana State, really ripped him, man. We're underway of the second half, and you see what's happening in the Central Division. The Bears flank Detroit 19 nothing. and does Neil Armstrong have that team going, Tom Maddie? He sure does, and, it, and Minnesota just cannot afford to lose this ball game right now to, you know, to fall behind Chicago. Uh, Minnesota being uh, put to the test here. They're behind the second half. There goes Foreman swinging wide to the right, and the game will be only at three or four yards. Doesn't turn the corner that well. It'll bring up second down at six, and there's what happened. Minnesota completely controlled the statistics 
points in the first half, but Tampa Bay cashed in. You take a look at the possession time again. This is a key factor of why, you know, Tampa Bay utilized the mistakes that Minnesota made. They only had the ball for 9 minutes and 12 seconds. Minnesota had it for 20 minutes and 48 seconds. That's their unbalanced. 14 for 19 for Sir Francis. Here he goes. Second down and six. The foreman knocked down for a loss at the 20-yard line, and somebody really put some pressure, and I think it was number 57, Dave Lewis. And what a whale of a linebacker he's going to make. 235 pounds, 6'4". You can see the pressure. The offensive lineman is knocked right back in the backfield, right into Foreman. He trips over him, number 57. Pumped Dave, right <laughs> Dave Lewis from Southern California, and I'll tell you, John McKay is no dummy for taking those former Trojans <laughs> when he gets those kind. Third down, 11. Minnesota faced here with a big possession play at the very outset of the second half. A rush is on a little screen to Foreman at the 20. Foreman cuts back 25. He will not get the first down. Stopped at the 27-yard line, and the hit was made by Cecil Johnson, an outside linebacker on the right side, as Tarkenton went to a little screen to Foreman, but it did not get the yards they need. So it'll be fourth down and two. You know, Foreman has that deceptive move. He can move laterally as quickly as he can forward. But the thing that I'm impressed with is the mobility that the linebackers have for Tampa Bay. They are all over that field. Larry Mucker is in again with Ike Higgins in the safety for Tampa Bay. I wonder if something has happened to George Ragsdale. A beautiful punt hung up by Mike Wood. Way high. Good hang time. At the 30, second by Higgins. He's hit his back. That was a dangerous reception he took because breaking down Tom Hannon was right on top of him along with Nate Allen. But Tampa Bay gets the ball, leading by a pair in the third quarter. The Steelers keep rolling. Uh, Chuck Nolan, Terry Bradshaw over at Pittsburgh must have put something together to really get it going. To beat Cincinnati that bad, that's a good ball club too down there, except Anderson's hurt. First and 10 for Tampa Bay at their own 32. Inside handoff going straight ahead. Number 35 is Jimmy DuBose. Tripped up as he crosses the 35 by Phil Wise, the strong safety. Here you can get a good view of how a hole opens up in the back picks it. He just breaks to the inside. He picks his hole. It's just an off-tackle play where he has the option of going wherever it is. If there's pressure from the inside, he'll bounce to the outside. But he saw the hole in the inside, picked up good yardage. DeBose goes out now, and Johnny Davis comes back in the backfield. He's quite a blocker for Ricky Bell. Second down at five, they pick it to Davis to give it to Bell, trying the first down to the left side, stops short. Round the 39 by Jeff Seaman again. There's the man, the number one <laughs> draft choice, six years ago from Stanford. And about as solid a middle linebacker as there is in pro football today. That'll bring up third down and three for the young quarterback. I think the question now here in the second half, Tom Matty, is can Tampa Bay generate some kind of an offense here to rest their defense? That's right. You can't go out there and expect to play a full ball game, uh, the defense to play the full game. And with that kind of possession time, you know, you're going to wear these guys down. And here's a big play, and it's going to be DuBose for the first down, but a penalty flag is thrown. DuBose goes to the 42. It looks like it would be enough for a first down. However, the yellow flag is in the air, and it was Jeff Seaman again. Now the Tampa Bay players are pointing to Minnesota, and for good reason. The Vikings were <laughs> offside. That's a break. That's what you need. you got to have those kind of mistakes on the other team to keep that momentum going for you. Tampa Bay Buccaneers came in the National Football League three seasons ago, and... Defense number 54 offside at the first down. Fred McNeil, the right linebacker. But Tampa Bay came in and promptly launched an all-time losing record in the National Football <laughs> League of 26 consecutive games. Finally looked like they were going to break out last year. Been a disappointment for two games, but today they have showed signs of being a team that is gelling. First and ten. Ricky Bell looking for a hole that isn't there. Jeff Seaman is instead. And Seaman closes the door, and you think Bud Grant isn't proud to have him <laughs> patrolling the middle. You know, talking about Tampa, the thing that's really great are the people down there. We trained down there. The Baltimore Colts trained down there for a couple of years, and 
I had an opportunity to meet a lot of good people down there, and they're just so happy to have the Tampa Bay Bucks down there. They had set a, the all-time attendance record for the exhibition season this year, averaging over 60-some thousand per game. Well, they come from everywhere in the Central Florida to see these teams play. Now they come back the other side. Bell looking for some room, and this Viking defense now is stiffening. They close the door once more on John McKay's team. McKay, who had set a five-year plan to have a contender in the National Football League, and looks like he's pretty much on schedule. He's got the defense going for him right now. All he has to do is generate some offense. Boy, what a history he has. He played at Oregon with uh, Norm Van Brocklin, whose uh, name will always go down in Minnesota history as the first coach. But Grant being the second of the Vikings. Ben McNeil is out. Nate Allen's come in on the nickel defense. So five backs are on the field now for the Vikings, looking for the pass from Doug Williams. Might have been too much time. Delay of game. And this just presents another five yards for the problem for Doug Williams. It's going to be now Off fourth and a third down delay of the game. and 15. Back to the 39. Ike Higgins brings the play in from John McKay, replacing Ricky Bell. So McKay continues the chess game, bringing in a fast wide receiver, replacing Bell. This leaves one back, Johnny Davis, behind Williams for blocking. Four man rush. And there's Williams going down the left side to Hagen. He's got it inside the 25 Beautiful. yard line. Sensational oh. grab by Ike Higgins. And did he get it? No. I thought he had it, but he did not hold it. I'm sorry, but uh, looks like he had it. I to thought me, he huh? had it from up here, too. It was a perfect throw right down the sideline, laid it over that outside left shoulder. I'll tell you, Williams can really throw that ball. There he goes. I thought he had it. We were blocked from the angle. I thought he had caught it and fell out of bounds. Well, you can see from that angle that he didn't, but uh, I would have played a bob down on that one that he had <laughs> held it. Fourth down now, Tampa Bay. Minnesota is held. Vikings will get the ball. Oh, That's the first bad kick off the foot of Dave Green. Goes out of bounds upfield around the 34-yard line. So Minnesota... Gets pretty good field position after holding Tampa Bay where they did at the 40. And the Vikings take over. They're trailing by just two points here in the third period with 9.53 to go in this quarter. Boy, Seattle did it. They pulled a big upset over the Jets. 24 to 17. That's a final, Jim. Yeah, the Jets had hoped to make it 3-0 for the first time since 1966. And here's another score. Philadelphia ahead of New Orleans, 14-7 in the third quarter, and the Eagles may finally win one. I think so. Listen, Vermeil's one heck of a coach. I did a couple games there. He's had a rebuilding program very similar to what Tampa Bay has done. And it's, I think he's, he's got a good ball club. Rand Targeton goes right to work down the left side. A man wide open with shot near the 50. First down for Minnesota. The Vikings, as they like to do, striking through the air. Mike Washington was there for the stop. You know, Tarkington set this up. As you can see, he comes right back, fakes the run, rolls back out to the outside, holds that defense, sets up, steps forward, lays that ball out perfectly. It's a beautiful throw. You know, Francis has played this entire game offensively, but they have another young quarterback here who's going to be something in future years in uh, Tommy Kramer. But let's watch Tarkington. Beautiful fake on the wide end around. Now the receiver, Sammy oh. White. And he has tripped up to cross the 50. A little trickery by Sir Francis. Yeah, they have the old reverse going around here, that end around bit. But let me tell you, this is great defensive play. Dave Lewis turns it inside. He sure does. He stays out there, sees it develop, yells at reverse, and everybody's coming over. But he makes a great play on that. Now, there was Ron Yarry leading the play from Southern California, and Dave Lewis from Southern California <laughs> making the stop. Gain on the play is about uh, five yards. Second down and five. They give it the backfield to Foreman, and he has swarmed over. This is a fired up young? defense. Might have been uh, young. At the 46-yard line, Leroy Selman it was to stop Ricky Young. So it'll be third down and four. 
and a half. Call it third and five at the Tampa Bay 46. And this is where this is where Francis is a master at this game. This is where he hits those backs coming out of the backfield. All they need is three, four yards. You put in a halfback or a fullback. They're both running back as far as I'm concerned on the linebacker. Just a little delay there. Oh, he's got the pressure. He is sacked. Breaking through with Wally Chambers again and takes Francis Tarkenton down the 37 yard line. A big defensive play. Big defensive play. I think Wally wants to play. He's really putting the pressure on. There he comes. And he's got the speed and he's got the range. He really reaches out there and throws him down. And 63, Leroy Selman. You also say Dave Lewis in there again. Boy, that is a talented defensive <laughs> team for Tampa Bay. And the punt, Mike Wood. Averaging 37 yards a kick this year, had one long one of 40. So he hasn't been a long kicker, but he hangs it high. Here's Ike Hagen's fair catch at the 35. Penalty flag down. Was he hit after the fair catch signal? Scott Studwell, outstanding linebacker, broke some of Dick Butkus' records at Illinois, was down there covering. He's been a hard-nosed player on the specialty teams for the Vikings. Penalty flag was thrown, and I think the way they're retreating, this is going to be against Tampa Bay. I don't know. Must be. Clipping against the. Uh, yep. Oh, clipping was, call. You're right. Studwell got clipped on the play. Well, he leads the charge down. It's a kamikaze type player <laughs> needed for that. And uh, well, let's listen to make sure. Clipping personal foul number 44 on the run back. That's first down. So, Tampa Bay gets the ball, but they're back deep at their own 20. Still leading by two. You see on that right, right hand corner up here, the clip on number 45. And the clip, clippy, I guess you might call it, is number 44. Right up there in the right hand corner. You can see him rolling up the back of his legs on that. The official sees it right there. Bill Cesar. Oh, what a gung-ho guy he is. <laughs> he Billy was, was a walk-on to the University of Miami. Never really played much, but he kept plugging and finally signed for the Buccaneers. A Williams for the pass. Off in the flat. Oh, he sent it for Bell. A dangerous pass thrown behind him, and Fred McNeil was almost in position to pick it off. Another score in the fourth period. Cleveland 17, Atlanta 16. You know, this, I did the opening game for Cleveland, and there's another young ball club that's really coming back. Uh, Brian Seip has came off some injuries from last year, and they're playing good football. Greg this Pruitt, be their the third. exciting team. Williams now three for 15 for only 37 yards. Has not gotten any kind of an aerial attack going. Second and 10. Fox is on 10-yard line. Williams. Under fire, he hits his man, Giles, at the 35. Tight end goes to the 40. First down, Tampa Bay. And just as we said that, boom. A beauty <laughs> from Williams, who finally got some protection, and he had his tight end hooked right up the middle. You know, for a young quarterback, he keeps a lot of poise. He's back there for a long time. He's looking around, looking around. He finally finds somebody. Pops it. It's a 21-yard gain. There's a big man catching the ball. Jimmy Giles, 241 pounds, six foot three, came from the Oilers and the trade that gave Houston Earl Campbell. Oh, the first down play. Play action. And again, across the middle. That is a little bit high for Morris Owens to handle. He had him wide open. And it seems to me now the Viking defense is playing the ball very conservatively. They're laying back, and Tampa Bay is getting men open. You're right, they were that time. Not only that, but the fullback coming out of the backfield that time was open going down the sideline. So Doug Williams can get an aerial attack going here. <laughs> the Vikings are going to have some real problems. Carl Eller is in it left end now. Randy Holloway is in it right end. So Bud Grant getting fresh troops along the front four. Second down play. Hand off the back here comes Bell. For room. Turns the corner to 45, trying to get to the first down. He's out of bounds near the midfield strike. I think he'll miss the first down by about a yard. I tell you, here's a great move to the outside. It's just a hand out of fake draw up the middle right there. Bell slides along the line of scrimmage. Breaks that tackle. Good cut there. Almost gets the needed yard for the first down. He's about a yard short. It's a big third down situation here, Jim. They've got to keep this momentum going, keep that ball rolling down the down the field, and if they can, you know, get this first down, 
Uh, you got to get some more points on the board. Two points isn't enough against this ball club. Third one. Would you go to Bell? Would you go to Dubose? <laughs> They're going to go to Dubose. And did he make it? I don't think I don't so. Think He's so. stacked up. There's uh, Seaman right in the middle of the stack. Also in there is Alan Page, number 88. And 59 at the bottom of the pile is Matt Blair, fifth-year veteran from Iowa State. And where they've spotted the football, it seems to me, is going to be short by about one and one-half <laughs> inches. I think you may be right. <laughs> well, get a measurement. <laughs> Ben's putting his boys to work. Williams thought they might be looking for Bell. He went instead of Dubose. How do you like that camera coverage? Our boys are ah, doing a job yes, for sir. It's Gentleman two Jim inches, got right two in inches. there, didn't he? Now what do you do? They punt. You've got the best punter in the league. I don't know. Two. Hey, going for it. You think so? Oh, yeah, he's going for it. All right. Jim O'Brien, right. another tight end comes in. Now, this has got the Minnesota fans stirred up. They've come to life. They're going to challenge the Minnesota Purple People Eaters right here at midfield. Uh, Fourth and inches. A gutty call. What about Sink? <laughs> Leaping <laughs> is Williams and I think he made it. He got it. That 6'4 frame jumped right up over the top. Doug Williams on a quarterback sneak. What a gutty call. <laughs> but it's first down Tampa Bay. Boy, the Buccaneers are gaining more confidence, I'm sure, as the seconds tick away here in Bloomington. Six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. And Minnesota being pushed back slowly. Grudgingly, too. Right. But Tampa Bay has a drive going. To the right, Owens. To the left, Higgins. There's a play action. Williams looking, being chased down the middle. He's got his man. Ooh. That was dropped by Owens, who was wide open. A penalty flag is thrown at the line of scrimmage. Alan Page putting quite a rush on Mr. Williams, but still he got it there. And Larry Mucker couldn't hold. Now the final score. Kansas City losing to the Giants 26 to 10. That is a final. Penalty now is going to be walked off against Tampa Bay, and it'll be 10 yards. Holding Offensive balance. holding, number 78. First down. Kurt Schumacher, who was put in to left guard. They got him on waivers from the 49ers. When Jeff Winans had to go on injured reserve. Another <laughs> score. He was, Schumacher was not only that, he was cut, picked up, and came back again. He just got back into camp again. He's, he's starting because of the injury problem that they've had. So the Eagles score now up by 10 points. Hand off to Ricky Bell, trying to cut back, and Bell is stopped short of the 45. That'll bring up second down, about 6, 17 yards to go for Tampa Bay. Bill Wise, in from strong safety, diagnosed that play with Mark Mullaney. Mullaney's a young player who's working into Minnesota's front four, which is picking up age, as everybody knows. But as Marshall and Eller, Page, build on the years, long come players like Mullaney and Randy Holloway, and Duck White. Well, their names are going to be taking over here in future years. Second and 17. Big play for Williams. Williams is going out oh. deep, deep downfield, but uh, no chance. The ball was thrown out of bounds, intended downfield for Owens, and covered all the way by Nate Wright. I think he made a smart decision there. It looks like he just threw that ball away. He saw the deep zone coverage by Minnesota. And there was just no way he's going to get that ball down there and make a completion. He threw it out of bounds. You know, we have a, speaking of the secondary for the Minnesota Vikings, one of the, the players that's injured for the Vikings right now is, is uh, our, my boy Paul, Paul Kraus. You know, he has 78 interceptions to date, needs one more to tie to now for the all-time league in interceptions. Yeah, and that was uh, a pretty good free agent, huh? <laughs> Third was, down, uh, long yardage for Tampa Bay. Minnesota looking to hold them here and to get back to football trailing by two points. Going to the third quarter. Williams with time. Penalty flag down. There's a bump down field intercepted by Bryant and drop. Penalty markers drop. Back upfield here around the passer, which might indicate holding. Then a collision down the field as Bobby Bryant broke it up, holding again against Tampa Bay. Now Minnesota can refuse this one. 
and force the Buccaneers to punt the ball. That will bring up fourth down. <laughs> you know, Jim, it's really funny, but Bryant's had three opportunities today. They have interceptions and missed all three of them. Well, what a big one he made the other <laughs> night against Denver, huh? Here's Sitting nice, in yeah. the end zone, he got one that saved at least a field goal, and here's Minnesota giving Tampa Bay another play. They're going to take the penalty. Offensive holding, number 68, third down. Well, you know, I do the same thing. You know, you take a look at what Williams is doing as far as his receptions go, and you know, he's, he's like four for 19, so I might take the chance on letting him throw the ball up. He's just not, he's not making the completions. He's well, under a lot of pressure from the Viking defense. Bud Grant, there's Bob Holloway, who's now the defensive coordinator, was a head coach himself. You got a glimpse of him. Scott Studwell has come in for Minnesota. It's third down. Long, long yards ago, 27 ago, a sweep by Ricky Bell. And Bell has run out of bounds up to 39. So Tampa Bay will now be punting the ball away from back in their own territory. The Minnesota Vikings waiting to get their mitts on the football and trailing by two points with just under five minutes to go in the third period from Bloomington. This is the game, of course, Minnesota figures it cannot afford to lose. Chicago's already gone 3-0 in this division. That's right. They cannot make mistakes. They've got to have a sustained drive going here. Dave Green. Green gets off a pretty good punt this time. A spile that kicks away. Oh, gets over the head of Allen. going to be down inside the 10. Beautiful punt oh. play as it turned out for Tampa Bay. And now the Buccaneers. Oh, wait a the second. Ball. It, that it, was touched it, by it Minnesota. Was touched. Kevin Miller touched the ball. He doesn't believe it. But Tampa Bay is going to get the ball at the five-yard line, and this is going to bring a howl now. Holy mackerel. You can't. We you don't have a good advance angle on a this. Ball. You can't advance a muff ball. Now Jim, watch. It must have hit him right there on the shoulder. It did. You're right, Tom. And it is what we call a muff ball, and you cannot advance the muff ball. But what a break again for, for Tampa. It'll be first down and goal to goal. And uh, I don't think the Tampa players realize it, Tom, because they're standing around waiting for the ball to roll dead. But number 44 for the Buccaneers, Billy Cesar. Now, there's the young guy <laughs> so to eager to play. He saw it, scooped it up. Let's, we're going to watch again if we get a chance. But now let's watch Tampa Bay. They got a chance here to open up a lead. Oh, boy. They're up by two points with first and goal to the five. Here's Williams looking the end zone. He fires in zone. Touchdown! Touchdown. It oh. is caught in there by Morris Owens. Tampa Bay scores on the first play after covering the muff punt. And the Buccaneers have gone up now, 15 to 7. Here's the touchdown pass again. Williams rolling to the right. Wait through that receiver to do his inside move. Breaks back to the outside, and it's a perfect throw. Great reception, great throw. And Williams is one half the quarterback right now. Well, that's twice today the Buccaneers have cashed in on mistakes. They've been, they've been destroyed in their own right on mistakes and turnovers for two weeks, especially last week against Detroit. And here today, they've cashed in. This one, five yards of just one play. O'Donoghue now will try. A good snap this time, and he puts it through. So Tampa Bay has gone up now by nine points over Minnesota. The Vikings will have to score twice for late in the third quarter, 16 to 7. Tampa Bay leads. There's the uh, scoring drive, uh, one play, four <laughs> seconds, five yards, the pass, and here's O'Donoghue. Neil O'Donoghue, a native of Dublin. All-American soccer player from St. Bernard College in Tennessee. And to Auburn. And to the end zone. Kevin Miller will run it out. 10, 15, 20. Fumble. A battle for the ball at the 20-yard line. Tampa Bay recovers again. The Buccaneers have come up with another loose football. And Tampa Bay now. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They got a signal Tampa Bay's ball, and I think they have pointed the other way. Oh, boy. That would have really busted this game wide open if they'd have gotten to capitalize on that mistake. 
Well, let's take a look. I think the <laughs> official first pointed the other way, but then Fred McNeil had the ball. That's Miller. There he going, breaking right up through the inside. You can see the ball pop out. People start diving for it. And it had to be a Viking. There was no, there was poor Viking. There's targeted to Foreman out of the backfield on first down over the 20. Grab on a shoestring tackle. A brilliant defensive play by Dave Lewis again from his linebacking ball. Stops Foreman from breaking loose. Pick up his two yards. It'll be second down and eight for the Minnesota Vikings who have now had the challenge put to them by the unheralded Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the thing that, that, that they've got to work against is a great defense, and Francis has got to come out throwing that ball now to catch up football time. Lots of time, three and a half minutes, third quarter, fake draw, target to try and set up the screen. Lobs it over here, and the staff a good coverage there by Tampa Bay, and going nowhere is Ricky Young. Boy, Tampa Bay's defense has played flawless football. That's right, they have. The defense has just done a great job. They're not giving up any of the big plays, and Francis is still going with the short stuff. He's got to start hitting some of his receivers downfield if he wants to make this team move. He's got great receivers. He's got Rashad, he's got White, he's got Tucker. These guys are good receivers, and all he's doing is hitting those backs coming out of the backfield. Now, these are very mobile linebackers, Richard Wood and Cecil Johnson, Dewey Selman and Dave Lewis for uh, Tampa Bay. Third down and 10. A big play for Minnesota. Francis going down the right side. Either caught by Rashad or Sammy White at the 35 for a first down. That's what he's got to do. He threw right into the zone right now. You can watch Francis set up. Go over my Sammy White's going down, hooking up in between both the backs and deep enough behind the linebacker to catch the ball. Goes right up for it, makes a good catch. Has enough yardage for the first down. You know, Minnesota's been fighting something, too, a jinx, uh, as it were, or poor play, because a lot of passes have been dropped <laughs> on the first couple of games, but today they've been hanging on to them, both Rashad and White. But you made a good point, Tom. He needs to go deeper a little bit more. Hand off to Ricky Young up the middle, plunging hard oh, over the boy. Boy. Drives the ball out to 42. And the Vikings now playing with a little bit more fire. Here's Washington St. Louis, third period. Jack Pardee and the boys are really putting him with Joe Theismann leading that group, 28 to three, third period. Looks like they may be headed to, uh, to an early showdown with Dallas somewhere. And Houston, San Francisco, Houston's out in front with Pastorini, 17 to six. Game of eight is second down and two. For Minnesota, Foreman, the middle, trying for the first time. He's got a good truck in that way. Chuck Foreman, the veteran from the University of Miami, makes the play up to the 46, stopped by Dave Pear and Dewey Selman. That was just a great second effort there, Jim. Foreman did his usual spin out, which he likes to do when he gets blocked. He spins out and really, he dug that, you know, he just dug in there and got that extra yardage on his own that time. He's ranked fourth this week in the National Football Conference in both receiving and rushing. <laughs> First down at the 46. First down again, target. A little quick out to Sammy White, hit immediately by Cotney and driven out of bounds. A short gain to the 49. Three-yard pickup, second and seven. So Francis moving his plays around again. That time, set White down and out. Little sideline pattern. I'll be glad to give them that, those little short ones. They don't want the deep ones. That's what, you know, well, that's what'll kill you. But they're using a lot of the zone defense against the Vikings, and, you know, they're just hanging back there waiting for them to throw, try to throw that long one. Haven't seen much from Rashad here in the second half. He's off the left side, down the bottom of your screen. They give it inside to Ricky Young, and he is hit immediately. Struggles for a couple of yards. That's all he's gonna get. Right in the middle of the line, defensively for the Buccaneers was Big Dave Pear, one of the strongest men in football, and Wally Chambers. Bud Grant, 21st year of coaching pro football in Canada, where he was highly successful, and here with the Vikings. And there is the end of the third quarter. So that's the end of the third quarter with a score. Tampa Bay, 16, and Minnesota, 7. We now pause for a word from your local...
Well, a man who played <laughs> under Paul Brown and has run a similar type program here since 1973 against Central Division teams, Tom Matty. Uh, Bud Grant's teams are 26 and 5. I'll tell you, he's some kind of a coach. Well, right now, his team uh, facing an uphill struggle. Oh, the thing about it is the statistics are so one-sided for the Vikings. They've got 13 first downs to Tampa's eight, but yet the Vikings have not scored while Tampa's capitalized on the mistakes that the Vikings have made. Possession play for Tarkenton, and he's down the middle, and he hits his man tight end Bob Tucker for a first down inside the 40. Richard Wood on the stop and a first down for Tarkenton, who very meticulously rolled out and picked out his open man. You could see Tarkenton rolling to the right here, but the thing about it is Tucker is a veteran player. He knows this is his own defense. He hooks up right in the middle of the zone. You can see players coming from both sides. And it's just smart football. Well, how those two used to team up for the New York Giants long before Tucker ever put on a purple uniform here at uh, Minnesota. First down over the Vikings who are driving. Here's a fake reverse. Target to, and he is sacked behind the line. A great rush put on by Pear. Dave Pear broke through the sack Targeton. The second sack today. Here you can watch him come in. This guy's got... He's got 4-7 speed, and boom, there's a flag on the play also, so let's see what happened there. Pear is just quick and big and strong. Well, now, this penalty is against Tampa Bay. It's going to be a big, uh, fortunate break for Minnesota, and the signal is against Tampa Bay. What a break for them, because Targenton had lost about 11 or 12 yards on the play, and instead... They're going to wind up uh, with a five-yard penalty against Tampa Bay. Yeah. Defense, illegal contact, number 43, that's a first down. 43, uh, you're not allowed to hit, hit in the helmet, remember? Remember the old helmet uh, slap? That's right. Is that what it is? That's right. A legal hit? Can't do that anymore. Legal Five contact, yards. first down. Balls at the 30-yard line. Up the middle, Foreman runs into a stack of players. <laughs> up with Foreman with Ricky Young. Uh, Dallas, Los Angeles, a great game. This could, could be, a, you know, something that we might see in the Super Bowl. These two teams going at each other here. Yep, but Rams defense, uh, Rams defense has been something. And now they'll see if they can hold Mr. Dorsett and Roger Staubach and company. Coming up next. For many of most of you, you'll see most of that game. So we'll be joining that game in progress. Dallas and the Rams, who already lead 7 0. Here we go. Second down. Inside the 30 yard line. They hand it off to Foreman. Cracks off right tackle for a short game. This is a tough defense against the run. Here's the a final here. Team. Cleveland's come on top again. That's their third, 24 to 16 over Atlanta. And Atlanta's a good defensive ball club. They don't give up that many points, so Cleveland really must have done a good job today. Minnesota and the fourth period, 13 minutes and 15 seconds to go. Tampa Bay leads 16 to 7. One of the things that you really look at is third down conversions. Tarkington has seven out of 13 third down conversions, while Tampa only has two out of 10 third down conversions. Third and seven right here. Last time he brought in his tight end, Bob Tucker. Here's a good rush on Tarkington. Up the middle, and he won't get it this time. The completion is there inside the 25, and a great hit is put on by Curtis Jordan. So Young caught the ball, but Jordan was right on his tracks. Hit him down, it brings up fourth down. Tampa or uh, Minnesota will go for the field goal here to cut the lead to six, hoping later to get the touchdown to take the lead. The kick will be, let's see, the ball's for 23, about a 40-yard attempt, or maybe 41. 41 by Rick Danmeyer, who was five for five coming into this game, but missed his only chance here today. And this one is up and hits the goal post, will not count. How about that for one game? A point after try for Tampa Bay, hits the upright. Dan Meyer on a field goal hits one, and it was a crucial try. Tampa Bay holds its lead of nine points. More live coverage, coverage coming on Sports Spectacular next Saturday from the Trenton 150. It looks like it could be a matchup of Al Unzer and Mario Andretti in that one. And then, Tom, the Ruffian live from Belmont Park. Two great 
great events to be able to see on Sports Spectacular. I expect last year's winner, cum laude Laurie, to be in the ruffian. That's next Saturday on Sports Spectacular. Tampa Bay is held under the rules. The ball comes back to the line of scrimmage on the field goal miss. So it's there at the 23, first and 10. And off the back here goes to DuBose. Jimmy DuBose has played a great deal today. And over the 26 he goes. Oakland coming out of that slump that they've had at the beginning of the year here. Green Bay is losing 21 to 3. Green Bay was 2 and 0. Oh, so you know they're right still right in contention with this with this division in the black and blue division they call it. Well, the Bears have already won today beating Detroit, Green Bay. That could be their first loss. So Chicago will be all alone at the top of the Central Division. A good look at Doug Williams. Second down and seven. Given the backfield. Break it to Ricky Bell. Almost broke it. Got the first down at the 34-yard line. Ricky Bell taken over Tony Dorsett by his old coach John McCann. This is just, line. just good running coming across. A trap play. Breaks back to the inside. Sees the flow of traffic going one way. Picks the hole very well. Gets the first down. Jeff Seaman and Tom Hannon, you see, teaming for the stop. Bell isn't having the, the greatest day running, but he's he's hammering away in there. He's got about 15 carries for 48 yards right now, while Du Bois has seven for 20. Last week he had almost 100 yards rushing. They pan off the backfield to DuBose. Good blocking up front. DuBose is over the 40 before he's finally collared. His first it looked like by Fred McNeil and then Matt Blair. The two outside linebackers for Minnesota. But the gain is almost nine yards up to the 42-yard line. It'll be second down and one to go. And Minnesota's defense spending more time on the field here in the second half. And Tampa Bay now showing a little bit more offensive spark. They sure are. What they're doing is they're starting out as sweeps, and the backs are cutting back against the grain. And the flow of action by the, the defensive lineman for Minnesota Vikings is opening that hole to the inside, and the backs taking advantage of it. And off the bell, out of tailback, goes for the first down. He's close. Ricky Bell stacked up around the 44. A lot of purple shirts in on the play. Brady H., Allen Page. In his 12th season from Notre Dame, number 54, Fred McNeil. Both first-round draft choices. 12 first-round draft choices playing for this team, seven of them on this defensive unit. I'm going to say he's missed it by two inches this time. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's see. I think it's a tie, Tom. <laughs> Silman will get us the shot. Oh, he got it. Uh, well, he, oh, he got it a long First shot. down. <laughs> first <laughs> down at the 44. <laughs> Tampa Bay. Every first down they can chalk up is like money in the bank. With 10 minutes to go in the game, they lead 16 to 7. What a win this could be oh. for the Buccaneers, huh? Against the team that's dominated this division for the last decade. Wide to the left. I'll tell you, Larry the people Mucker. back in, uh, in Tampa have got to be happy about this. Well, they'd be dancing in Ebor City tonight, wouldn't they? <laughs> DuBose cutting back, 45. DuBose to the 49. Again, you know, this looks like Southern California playing now, <laughs> the way they're running the football. That's right. They're going against the grain again. You can watch on the the action of the of the back right here. He t starts to the outside. He sees the flow of the linebackers going to the outside, and he cuts back against the green. And you can usually break some arm tackles with that. What they're doing, Tom, is they're getting the good first down play. The last couple of series, the Buccaneers have picked up six, seven yards on first down, just as they did here at second down and four. That gives Williams a lot of working margin. Oh, uh -oh. great defense breaking through Page. A great veteran, Alan Page, saw the play, and you can go to the well only so often, and that time he was there by the time Ricky Bell got the football. <laughs> he and he nailed him right <laughs> in the backfield for a long. He almost had the ball, too. He's That's got the quickness. He does have the quickness. These, the defensive line for the, the Vikings isn't that big. You take a look right down the line, except, you know, Mulaney is a big kid, he's, he, but he's only 6'6", 242. But all these guys are between 240 to 250. Look at Marshall. He's been around the league for how many years now? Long, long time, Tom. Third down and six. A big play here on the draw play to get the bell. Bell looking for room. The 50 won't get the first down. 
He's halted right at the 50-yard line, smacked by Jeff Seaman and Fred McNeil, a pair of nifty linebackers for the Minnesota Vikings. And it'll be fourth down, and Tampa Bay will have to give it the football, and they're going to call on their specialist, Dave Green, to put the Vikings deep again. The Vikings have not put an all-out rush yet on Green today. <laughs> Look out this time. I think they might be coming after him this time. What a spot. Kevin Miller's back in single safety all along, and 10 purple shirts are lined up waiting for the snap. Here they come, and Green gets it away. Hurries the kick, though. Up is Kevin Miller to the 17-yard line. Hit at the 20 and taken down. A beautiful tackle downfield by number 77 for the uh, Buccaneers, Bill Kohler. What a job he did. So when we come back, Minnesota will go to work trailing by nine. Well, there's some of the people here. We have attendance of 48,401. And I must join Mudville at the moment. Because uh. the Vikings are trailing 16 to 7 in the fourth period with 7 minutes and 27 seconds to go. And Minnesota backed up to its own 17-yard line, first and 10. Rand Targeton continues. Rolled out to Foreman. He's got it to 19. Targeton continues with a short burst. Now the fans thought there was a late hit on Foreman. But you have to touch that man. He had not been touched by defensive player, and he can still get up and run. Well, I think the, the, the crowd's reaction, uh, Jim, on that play was the fact that Tarkington is not throwing the long pass. They want to see him open up this offense a little bit, and right, you know, right now he has. He's still hitting those backs coming out. He's got to go to his good receivers. When you've got, you know, when you've got the great ones, you've got Rashad, you've got Tucker, you've got Sammy White. These guys can catch the ball, but you've got to get it downfield. That's hard to second guess the guy who's thrown for 320 touchdowns up the middle. Uh oh, oh. It. Hold down by Jordan. He's over the 25, the 20, and Jordan is still going to the 10-yard line. Sensational interception by Curtis Jordan, a young third-year player from Texas Tech, and he timed that perfectly from free safety. Here he comes. Franny setting up. The ball is thrown right in the middle, cuts right in front of him, picks the ball up. And he makes a great run back on this. He, now, he goes through some tackles. He gets down to the 10-yard line, and boy, has this changed the complexion of this game. Curtis Jordan, he was smelling that goal line, and you can see determination, and that one, as they say, might be the straw that broke the camel's back. It's first and goal for Tampa Bay, and the Buccaneers lead the Vikings 16-7. Bell and DuBose behind Williams. They give it to DuBose. Left side, plunging to the six. And I wrestle down there. <laughs> I got some happy people down at Tampa. I got a couple friends down there that swear by them. Joe and Sandy Brooks, they love this team. And I know they got to be happy after that one. Well, it's, uh, if the Buccaneers win this football game, and they're certainly in a position now to spring the upset, uh, Vikings have to say they've been up against a pretty good team. I think it's more of a case of Tampa Bay gelling here than it is any kind of a jet lag of the Vikings coming off their Monday game. Well, that and the fact that, you know, that, that Tampa has really capitalized on the mistakes and you can't have them. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if you see, see uh, Tommy Kramer coming in now. As they both smack for loss by McNeil. Parkinson has had that problem this year. Intercepted seven times coming into this game. Picked off twice today at uh, very crucial times. And uh, you may be right. <laughs> Tommy Kramer may be destined to see some action here today, just as he is certain to be. There he is. Number 10, Sir Francis, has thrown for over 43,000 yards in an unparalleled career. Third down and uh, goal to go at the seven. They're going to get at least a field goal, I would imagine. That would mean the Vikings would need two touchdowns. Wide right, DuBose, called in for the defense. For loss. Carl Eller, number 81, led the charge. His 15th year, a veteran from Minnesota, the Moose. You can see that defense just flowing. Seaman going along. There's Eller holding on. He's not about to let him get away. But they got to get, they, they're still in good field position. They get this field goal. Boy, that, that does it. Well, a field goal would mean uh, a 12-point lead. And then a touchdown and a field goal would not do it for Minnesota. O'Donnell, a bad snap by O'Donnell. 
Now, this could be a big break for Minnesota. Donnie is trying to kick the ball, believe it or not. Minnesota's got it. McNeil. Oh, Donnie is after him. McNeil taken out of the pen. What a turn of events. You cannot advance the ball, but it's going to be Minnesota's ball around the 37-yard line. Well, the officials have got some things to think about there. That was O'Donoghue tried to kick it. Oh, talking about big mistakes, Jim. What a turn of events. Watch O'Donoghue. He tries to kick, kick the ball. It. He thought he was back in soccer for a minute. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking, but in a situation like that, fall on the ball. And now they're saying that he said no, no one did advance the ball. It was a loose ball and finally covered up a 10. That's the proper call. And now it's first and goal for Minnesota. Tom, have you ever seen play oh. swing that abruptly in that situation? And there's a lot of time left. We got four minutes and 22 seconds. If they could capitalize on this mistake, we got another ball game right here, right now. An incredible turn of events here. Tampa Bay, the decided underdog, in a position perhaps to put the game on ice. Minnesota, and one fell swoop on a bad snap from center, now threatening to get right back in the game. First and goal of the 10. Francis Targeting looking. Targeting in the left flat. It is not good, incomplete. Thrown short and low. Headed over there for the running back, Ricky Young. Tommy Kramer is beginning to warm up for Minnesota. Second and goal for the Vikings. Franny should have let that ball go sooner. Foreman was out in that flat wide open. All he had to do was lead him to the corner. He waited too long to throw the ball. And I think if he does, if they don't capitalize on this, I think there's no question about it. I think the Kramer's going to be coming in at quarterback. He's warming up on the sideline right now. Is a young quarterback. You know, it's just that this guy's been the greatest. Every record. You take a look right down the line. Franny set them all. What a spot for Sir Francis. Rushes on. And there's Selman. Leroy Selman's going to sack Parkinson. Takes him down the 25 yard line. What a big defensive play by the big Outland Trophy winner from Oklahoma. Here they come again. Look at that big man. Here's the pressure that you got. You know, you can't do anything about this. Franny has no place to go. Leroy Selman beating That's Steve Riley again at left tackle. Collars the uh, target, and now it's third down and goal to go. You can hear the champs. You can hear the champs in the stands, Jim. We want Kramer. Well, in that case, you cannot fault target. No way can you fault him on that. Wide to the left side. Is Rashad. Oh, there goes the Minnesota player in motion. Steve Riley, who was beaten a moment ago, went in before the snap. There's Kramer, Tommy Kramer, brilliant uh, first round draft choice of last year from Rice. Led the total All offensive fans, passing of the NCAA as a senior. As Rice Third University. Down. Riley now is going out of the ball game. He's been replaced at left tackle. And Charlie Goodrum will go over to replace him, and Dennis Fully comes in at left guard. You think, though, Jim, take a look at what Tampa has done right here. The Bucks have just come back defensively again. They have really, you know, they're doing a fantastic job. They, they've sacked Tarkington now for four times for 43 yards, and Leroy's got him three times himself for 26. Unbelievable. Targeting them with the eye, suddenly hit, incomplete pass. Hit from behind. In there was Cecil Johnson putting on pressure. I don't know who got him, but uh, targeting with arm was hit just as he started the forward motion. It'll be fourth and goal from the 29. Let's Here watch. it is. You can see it right now. Tarkington setting up. Again, the pressure by Tampa. He steps up into the pocket, but just as he steps up in there <laughs> to throw the ball, Leroy. who's there but Leroy? You better believe it. <laughs> Leroy Selman. He may be a player you'll never forget. Never. I'll tell you, he has impressed me today. It's the first chance I've had to do the Bucks, And I'll tell you, I'm excited about this team. They're going to be around for a while. 47-yard try by Dan Meyer. He hits it good. It's through there. Dan Meyer's longest of the season in his career. 47 yards. Minnesota's still got a chance with 3.40 to go. Tampa's lead cut to six. Sears 
national automotive values. Only $99 to $119 gets you not one, not two, not three, but four new four-ply tires for most subcompacts to full-size cars. $99 to $119. Now on sale, the Sears 36 battery. Loaded with starting power and it's maintenance-free. At only $27.99 with trade-in, you save $7 on Sears 36 battery. At Sears. Three, unidentified. Tampa Bay looking for the onside kick. Their lead has been cut to six points here in a bizarre turn of events. But kicking it away. And back in the end zone, Hagens will down it there for the touchback. Tampa Bay will come out to the 20. The clock shows three minutes and 33 seconds to go. The Buccaneers realize they have a dream here, a possible sensational upset in the making. But it's now been uh, put on different terms. Minnesota's back within six, and a touchdown could turn the table. Uh, here's where the pressure on a young quarterback really, really gets you know, really gets down to the nitty gritty. Can this kid do it? Can he do it? He's got two good running backs in the backfield. The offensive line has been doing a good job, but he's got to get a couple of first downs, Jim. Why, well, look at that Minnesota defense. Are they expecting to run? Nine players up there almost at the line of scrimmage. And they give him the backfield to DuBose, and DuBose will get very little. Maybe a yard. He is stopped by Matt Blair. Checking other scores. San Francisco coming back over Houston, 19 to 17. That's the fourth quarter. That should be near the end of the ball game. That's quite an upset. Philadelphia. Now, yep, they're leading, uh, going for victory here over New Orleans today down the Superdome, 24-17. That's also in the fourth period. And here in the fourth period at Bloomington, oh, we got a game. <laughs> have we ever? Six-point lead. Minnesota now smelling a possibility to pull it back. To those middle couple, that's it. It'll bring up third down and about seven yards to go for Tampa Bay. The Vikings now fired high, and this crowd has come to life. Over 48,000 fans, a sellout crowd here today. Doug Sutherland made the stop. Crucial, crucial play. Got to come up with a first down. Got to get... We got, they got to do it right here. Would you put the ball in the air here, Tom Manning? I'd have, I'd have Mr. <laughs> I'd have Mr. Williams rolling out or something. Let him get out there, have that option of running or throwing it. Put some pressure on the defense. Third down and seven. They're going to go to Ricky Bell. Bell will be stopped short of the first down. It'll be fourth down with two minutes to go. That's going to be the situation. And what a setting for well, Sir Francis if indeed it's going to be targeted. It might well be Tommy Kramer, but that uh, chapter of this uh, story is not uh, is to be written a little later. The decision will be made by that man in the center with the baseball cap. But Grant, he's showing a little emotion right now. Two minutes and five seconds to go. We'll get the five minute, two minutes uh, warning, which will stop play. Minnesota will have the ball with ample time, but they need a touchdown. A field goal won't do it. That's right. They've got to have the six points and the conversion. They've got one. They blocked uh, Tampa's conversion. All caused by a bad snap from center, uh, Tom. Gee. Wouldn't that be an irony? A game decided by a snap from center. Dave Green. This Leading. is where this guy has really got to come up with a big kick right now. They got 10 men up there again. You know they're going to come after it. They keep the pressure on this kid. Oh, snap very important here, too. Good one. Here's Green. He gets off the kick. Going for the sidelines. Away from Miller. Out of bounds in the 44. Good field position for Minnesota. The Vikings will have 57 yards to go to take the lead. Kramer's on the field. Listen to the crowd. Since the very first automobile was made in America, more than 2,500 new cars have been introduced. But the best-selling new car ever introduced is this one, Ford Fairmont. Fairmont has great EPA mileage estimates unsurpassed by any mid-sized car and the lowest sticker price of any car in its class. 
In fact, Fairmont has the most room for the money of any car. Ford Fairmont, the best-selling new car ever introduced. Sedans, wagons, exciting Futuras. See them all at your local Ford dealer. My old buddy Jim was a great umpire. He was quick on his feet. He's got eyes like an eagle. I'm still quick because I don't get filled up. I drink light beer from Miller. Light tastes great. It's less filling. It's got a... What's this say? Here you go, Jim. Try this. Oh, yeah. A third less calories than a regular beer. Hey, you're Boog Powell. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. There's the young man, the first quarterback well. ever drafted on the first round by Minnesota, Tommy Kramer from Rice. He's the heir apparent for Fran Tarkenton, and this time there's no injury to Tarkenton. Kramer's been put in as the hope to pull it out for the Minnesota Vikings. I think if he does it, you may see a lot more of him this year. Two minutes to go, Rashad to the left, Sammy White to the right. Marcus Kramer up the middle, incomplete at the 37-yard line, intended for the tight end, Bob Tucker. A good pattern. Have the deep men down both sides. And Bob Tucker. Okay, my partner Tom Matty going down the sidelines. We're going to have to talk to somebody who's going to be excited here, we hope, if there's time. In any event, it'll be second down and 10 for Minnesota. 1.54 to go. And Tommy Kramer has been put in the road here to pull his team from behind. Kramer's the left side. It'll be intercepted. It's pulled down on the 40-yard line by Cecil Johnson. Another big defensive play by Tampa Bay. Once more, they turn the tide. A third interception, the first one off Kramer. You're going to see it again as Cecil Johnson had the play perfectly. I don't think uh, Kramer ever saw Johnson because look here. There he is. Drop back in the zone perfectly right in front of Rashad. And Tampa Bay comes up with what might be now the biggest defensive play of the season for them because they take the football with 1.48 to go and a six-point lead. Minnesota still has two timeouts to call. The Buccaneers hoping now to run off the clock. Young Doug Williams back in the starting role has played the entire game today for Tampa Bay. Gives it to DuBose who's wrapped up immediately by Matt Blair. So oh, Blair put him down. The Vikings call timeout. That play took the barest minimum. Now 1.44 to go. So the Vikings now looking for a break. They're now in desperate position, trailing by six to only Tampa Bay, and time running out. Minnesota can kill the clock one more time. Conceivably, they'll get some time here at the end of the ball game if they can hold Tampa Bay for one last desperate chance. But the Buccaneers are now on the threshold of pulling off their biggest victory since entering the National Football League. Second down 11. They give it to Ricky Bell. Bell gets an opening. He's over the 45 and up to about the 47 or 48 yard line. Sizable game. Minnesota spends its final timeout. Carl Eller makes the start as you watching John McKay who gave up the greatest career that you can imagine in the college ranks at Southern California to come in the National Football League with a fledgling young team. He started at the depths of the NFL with 26 consecutive losses. Nothing will ever replace that first win over New Orleans. But this one would be something else. Now final, Oakland, impressive today. They need no wild finishes to beat Green Bay. First loss for Bart Starr's Packers this year, 28-3 up in Green Bay. Earlier, you know, Chicago won beating Detroit, so the Bears are on top of the Central Division. But this young team, which has been cast at the bottom by all the experts, has hopes now of holding on to upset the kingpin of the black and blue, the Minnesota Vikings. It's 16 to 10 with 137 to go. And as we mentioned, that's ample time. So this is a very big play. This is it for Minnesota. They have no timeout left. Third down and four yards to go. They pitch it to Bell. Bell swing wide right. He turns the corner, but will not get much. 
Out of bounds, stops the clock, which is in Minnesota's favor. And it'll bring up fourth down in a punting play. So Tampa Bay chose to go wide and stops the clock with 1.32 to go. Matt Blair with good pursuit for the Vikings and Phil Wise. Back into single safety now. Retreats Kevin Miller. And Tampa Bay once more will send number five, or number four rather, Dave Green back in punt formation. You can bet they're coming. Here they come. Green gets off the kick. A pretty good one. Miller has one run at the 20. Up the sideline, and out of bounds on the 22 with one minute and 24 seconds to go. That's what he's saving now, and we're expecting to see young Tommy Kramer come back in. Brand Tarkenton, who played most of this game, was intercepted again today at crucial times, and Tommy Kramer, who replaced him, had one picked off himself. But now he gets one last chance. 1.24 to go, and no timeouts to call. Robert Miller's in the backfield with Ricky Young, and no Chuck Foreman. But Foreman, of course, is the expert on the short pass, and what the Vikings need is something long. It is Kramer. Kramer on first down, dumps it off short. And here comes Ricky Young getting out of bounds. That kills the clock with 1.18 to go. The pickup will be less than enough for first down. Mark Cartney makes the stop. Kramer wants to go deep. Now, Tom Maddie's down the side. He wanted to go deep, Tom. He sure did, Jim. He dumps it off. He sure did. This is a real fired-up defensive team out here, and I know the Vikings have that confidence also. And, you know, when a young quarterback like this comes in off the bench, you know, that just fires your team up. Now, the thing that Tampa has got to do is stop that deep pass. You can see him dropping back in their deep formation here. It's a zone defense. What they're trying to do, the ball is thrown up just a little high, almost another interception for Tampa. That's the same pattern, Tom, they used a moment ago. The wide receivers down the side, and then he brought the uh, tight end, Bob uh, Tucker, on a deep post pattern up the middle. That one just thrown a little bit too strong. Just a little strong, but th what they're trying to do is Tampa is dropping back in their three-deep zone down here. You can see it on the field, which is great coverage. I wish I could do a game down here all the time. But the thing, they're dropping down, and what they're having, what the receivers are doing is hooking up in the dead spots in between the zone, trying to get that first down, get the good yardage to keep the drive moving. Okay, both wide receivers double covered. And here's a case on for Tommy. He's caught downfield, and it's uh, incomplete, almost intercepted, as Kramer came close to being sacked back there by Leroy Selman and Randy Crowder. The Randy Crowder now in the lineup for Tampa Bay, number 71. Now the pressure's been great down here. These guys are big. They've got the mobility. They're keeping the pressure on the young quarterback. The thing that they've got to do is get those receivers open if they want to keep this a, a su sustained drive going. This is it, Tom. Fourth That's down. <laughs> Ain't got many too, many too many more opportunities. You uh, got 106 left. They got to pick up at least three yards here, or it's history. Look for the short pass of that back coming out of the backfield just to get the first down. There it is, there it is. and he has hit his man. I don't know if he got it. may not be a first it. down. I don't think he got it. Uh, you're down there closer, Tom. What's I don't know. Like? I don't think he has it. Ricky Young was hit immediately. He didn't get it. This is going to be the ball game, and Tampa Bay is going to get its biggest upset. I don't think he has it. I'm right here on the markers. It is close, but I don't think it's there. Well, let's just be sure. Here's uh -huh. the look. Big measurement. I'm guessing he missed it by four or five inches. He sure did. It is first down, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay takes over. That's going to be it. Barring a fumble, 56 seconds to go. I can't believe he didn't get that yardage. Why, he had this, to get it. This Tampa Bay defense, <laughs> we can't say enough about it, Tom. I'll tell you. You're down there. How's it look to hey, you from Jim, there? I'll tell you, there's a demoralized Viking team, but I'll tell you, don't ever count these guys out. It's a long season. But the thing is, is this is a young team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the people in Florida got to be awful proud of this team because they've really hung, on, hung in there. Remember, too, they're going to have another meeting here in about two or three weeks <laughs> down in Tampa. That's right. <laughs> I think there might be some retribution, but, boy, today they've really played well. You can see everybody on the line of scrimmage right now. They're really coming after him. Yep, Doug Williams just drops on the ball. Now Minnesota's helpless. Their hands are tied. No timeout to call. They've used all here in the second half, and Tampa Bay now can smell victory. It's a matter of time now, 43 seconds and counting. No question about it, and I think that 
the players, the coaching staff, and you know, and, and, and the management should be very proud of this team. They've done a great job, and especially you've got to give all that credit to the defense. That's where it's due today. I'll tell you, the offense, you know, is just not sustained any big drives. They've hung in there. They've capitalized on the mistakes that the Vikings have made today, and. You know, it's sort of a reverse royal role today. It's usually that the Tampa Buccaneers are the guys that are making all the mistakes, and today, you know, the Vikings are doing it. That they are. This is just going to be a formality here, and that will be it. Ten seconds and counting. You see the time going. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have shocked the Minnesota Vikings, pulling off the biggest upset in the history of the Buccaneers franchise. There's the final gun, and you can put it down in the history books now. Tampa Bay has defeated Minnesota by 16 to 10 in Bloomington, an unheard of uh, possibility, probability coming into this game, but that is it. So I know for Tom Matty and yours truly, Jim Thacker, it's been quite an afternoon of thrills and excitement furnished by both teams, but mainly by Tampa Bay. Well, Stay you know, tuned as the NFL Today continues after this word from your local station.